Hi guys, it's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. It's uh, it's Starship Week, as I think we all know. We're literally watching we're watching a, a rocket that's you know a prototype version of a rocket that's gonna take humans to Mars. No big deal. We're literally watching that be built. We're literally getting like real time updates from Elon Musk about a freaking Mars rocket. Uh, uh, this this blows my mind. This is like these photos oh my god like i want this as a poster first off it looks like apparently uh elon got the new iphone because these are wide angle lenses um and every all of his tweets are always twitter from iphone um yeah so good i'm glad he did because these pictures are stunning oh look at that this is art this is beautiful like these are cool compositions too surprisingly um no offense elon i guess i shouldn't have been too surprised but i mean this is awesome this gives us a good frame of reference on how we can make some tweaks to the starship that i just built the other day for that video um about starship and all that stuff so um no that these i'm pretty sure these were taken by elon to be honest this is like very much his style just like walk in there he, no one else yeah i i mean maybe maybe they weren't taken by elon but uh, it does still say Twitter from iPhone. Actually, we could probably look at the metadata if we really wanted to get super creepy about it and figure out how they were taken. But regardless, these photos are awesome. Super, super, super cool. They give us some cool insight on uh, on how we can make uh, sh changes to uh, our Starship that I that I had built already for that video. And I figured I hadn't even done anything besides basically try to do that like belly flop entry thing. I think it's time that we... Uh, Try to see if we can get it to Mars. And of course, Kerbal Space Program, we don't really have Mars. You have Duna. Uh, so I think it's time we do that. What do you guys say? Um, first off, thanks, Josh and Blue Rhythm. Uh, yes, I am going to the event on Saturday. Uh, just got confirmation recently, and we're good to go. Um, I'm very excited. It's going to be a, a great a great event. Um, yeah, it'll be really fun. Okay, so we need to do something. We need to make it so these are... Sorry, if... Those of you that don't know, this is Kerbal Space Program. Uh, it is a simulatory thing slash game, and we're gonna put three on just like this. But we're actually gonna tuck them nice and close to the center, just like Starship. Look at that. that's a little closer than normal. But we could also, if we wanted to, we could also attach like some vacuum optimized engines. But to be honest, when this thing's fully fueled, it's gonna have way too much delta V for these missions anyway. Like, we're, actually, we might almost want to attach <laughs> vacuum optimized engines just so we don't totally over. Like, we could probably get to Mars and back with this thing fully stacked without refueling. And I was thinking it'd be kind of fun to actually try to refuel it and do all that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is all stock except for the DLC, um, the robotics DLC uh, breaking grounds. And other than that, totally stock. And we need to get we need to get music going. This is like the old, I haven't done this in a while and I need to do this more. I'm sorry. I honestly, this week made me realize like just how much I missed playing Kerbal. If you don't like watching me play Kerbal, guess what? That's the beauty of YouTube, my friend, is you get to control what you watch. Can you believe you? there's people that like every time I live some Kerbal, I will lose subscribers and people will be like, I'm not here to watch you play a game. It's like, great, don't. <laughs> don't click it. I don't know what. What do you? That's like the most confused. I didn't. I didn't buy a pizza to have it put in my mouth. Wait, what? What? Then why'd you? What are you doing? That's that's on you, man. Like what? What? <laughs> I I just don't understand that concept. Like that's. I do kind of wish that you could subscribe to like playlists or something, or like unsubscribe from playlists. Like I could put this. Ahead. What's going on? This is wonky already. Okay. You know, or, or have people, like, say, I don't want these types of notifications or something so they don't get blasted with notifications they don't care about. I get that. Uh, but, I mean, come on. Is it really that hard just to be like, oh, yeah, I don't really care. I'm going to... I You know what? I'm going to even do less. I think eight is overkill. I want this to be a little more realistic. So we're going to put... We're just putting some RCS on. These are the, the reaction control thrusters. Um, I think if we... Just do like four, that'll be plenty. Um, how is everybody? I hope you guys are doing great. It's This is a crazy busy week. It's super exciting. There we go, that looks pretty cool. Um, 
I'm just, yeah. Um, the event, I believe, is at 7 Central-ish. Uh, so, yeah. So, get ready. <laughs> Tune in. It's going to be fantastic. As I, I love, These events are like, these are like the Apple events um, for space nerds, in my opinion. This is just like super, super fun to be able to, to watch these events. I'm going to put some thrusters on the very bottom. This will make it easier to do mid-course adjustments and stuff. And we're also going to go to six legs because we found out that's the number. Thanks to Mr. Elon Musk. Two under the things. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Melo, I'm here to watch you play a game. That's that's perfect. That's you're in the right place then. Um, <laughs> so what we're gonna do? This thing is programmed to be able to do, um, you know, the, the finny, flappy body, flappy things. Innocent Raptor, how are you, man? Hi. Um, but I think I'm going to make this so we actually have, like, ISRU and stuff like that. Like, in-situ resource utilization and a drill and a way to get home. Even though, like I said, I honestly bet we'll have enough Delta V to, <laughs> to just do this whole mission anyway. Um, I'm going to put, like, a... We're going to do, like, a smaller mission. Like, you know, this is, these are, like, the first... This is going to be rough in it because there's only going to be... I'm pretending that, I don't know, we only have the first dozen people going to Mars, dozen Kerbals going to Mars. Um, so we're going to only do, actually, this will probably help. Yes, actually, this is a good idea because <laughs> I like how I'm correcting myself. Oh, actually, Tim, this is a brilliant idea uh, because this will help us lower our Delta V. Like right now we have way too much, <laughs> way too much power. Um, and you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to make all the, just kind of tweaking this baby here. Oopsies. Whoop. That's our U-source ISR, I, ISRU resource utilization. Um, that's how we are able to mine and get more fuel off of Mars or Duna. And let's see. I want to put one of those cupolas. What happened? Where? Where? Oh, there. <laughs> Hiding in plain... Plain sight. Um, but yeah, the event is on Saturday, guys. I will be there, of course, bringing you guys coverage. Um, and I can't wait. It's like the best time of the year, like I said. <laughs> it's like Christmas or something. Um, I'm going to try and stack this little cleaner. Like, I don't want that big, dumb, pointless gap. Let's put one of those lander cans in there. Where? Man, everything's changed on me. I have not been able to... I have not had time to play this very much lately. So I'm sorry if I'm just like wandering around like a... Total Gomer. There we go. I'm going to turn this so the hatch is, is windward or leeward. There we go, Starship. You're looking Starshipy, kind of. Um. <laughs> Warriston, thanks for our hard work. Love the content. Well, thank you, Warriston. Bluefinger, I'm just here to watch you play Kerbal. If I learn anything, I'm unsubscribing. Uh oh. The pressure's on. Um. Agent, it's 7 p.m. would be, all those events are always at night. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, I can't wait for Kerbal 2. It's going to be amazing. It, I, I mean, as much as, I've gotten so much love in my life out of Kerbal Space Program. Like, it has been so awesome. And if Kerbal Space Program 2 provides me even one-tenth that amount of incredible experiences, <laughs> then I... Am ready. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna kind of do some. I'll, I'm too lazy to make like an elevator and stuff. That could take way too long. I really want to just get this thing to Mars. I really just want to fly it. But I figure while we're at it, we might as well get Kerbals ready and all that stuff, you know, and send them there. And oh no, man, did I mess up the hatch? Um, yeah. So I'm gonna just make it really easy to egress. We're gonna pretend, use a little bit of our imagination. If you still have one of those left, um. And we're going to just have it so we only have to put a ladder here, I guess. <laughs> Want to make sure that's not going to get fried by the ra uh, the vector engines. This should be good. Okay. And then we're going to put a nice long ladder. Maybe we should test that Kerbals can actually get out over the RCS thing. Nah, that sounds too mathematical. Too mathy. <laughs>
<laughs> Matthew, hey, remember to hydrate. Hopefully we don't we don't have to worry about hydration as much in climate controlled Iowa compared to the dead heat of <laughs> of Boca Chica. But thank you. I will stay hydrated. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Oh, we need an ore tank. I hate that like I don't even want to use any of the ore. I just want it to be there. Just a nice small one. And then we're going to need a little bit of a drill. Maybe we'll put two drills on in case we lose one on descent. Hmm. Now hold on, I'm gonna kinda clip this in here. Just a little bit. Uh, we need solar. Again, on the leeward side, hopefully these don't totally burn up on entry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, last time, this general design that we started off with at the beginning of the stream, before I started tweaking with it, I already had up in that uh, Kerbal X or whatever that one store is. Um, I'm just going to put RCS up here, too, so that we can easily do some mid-course adjustments. And why don't you want RCS right at your head when you're hanging out in the <laughs> in the cupola? Speaking of cupola, do you guys see? Can I share this quick? We got to take a little second of a break because this is like the biggest deal that I'm not sure. How... It's weird because it's NASA and I'm... I'm not sure, um, how do I do this? Hang on, with when it's full screen without it just getting super wonky. Hang on. I don't know how to do this. Uh, okay, check this out. Uh, did you guys see this? That <laughs> I found out my stickers are on the International Space Station. I didn't know this was happening. Um, I still got to find a way to get the full resolution versions of these, but this is legit. These, this is, this, I. What? <laughs> that blew me away. Uh, I just saw that like last week and I literally almost dropped my phone. I was like, at first I was like, oh, neat. And, oh, yeah, uh, life goal achieved. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. So uh, so speaking of Cupola, I guess that I now have a, a connection to the Cupola. It was insane. Okay, so we have all of that uh, kind of ready, solar, all that stuff. What am I forgetting? Okay, we have to set up a few action groups here. So one is our remote guidance, two is remote guidance, five was cut engines. We don't want that anymore. <laughs> I like having five as my power toggle. 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 Okay, nice and easy. What's the angle on this? Because we might want it to be a little more out we can work on that later okay well, we've got that um what else do we want we want um let's make six deploying toggle drill those will come out then seven will be uh toggle surface harvester and also toggle the isru which will convert fuel toggle converter both of them Sweet. Okay, that looks good. What else do we need? We'll just have to transfer crew, whatever crew we put on this thing from there to there. This is crazy. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do a click on this. I think it will help. There we go, and not run into it. I like that. I could have probably just copied and pasted that one, but whatever. Uh, derp. There we go. Just double checking. Yep. Nice and in line. Looking good. Ah, then I went and ruined it. Retract. Retract. Starship to Mars. 
Okay, looking good. So what else do we need here? Um, we gotta stack this on a super heavy booster, of course. I'm debating just doing a quick little hop test with this thing. Although our thrust to weight ratio is too low. Um, Kevin, will, will SpaceX fly Starlink sats on Starship? Eventually, they of course could. Um, they might have the Constellation up, though, before before Starship's like totally up and running and maybe on to version 2 and stuff like that. It'll be no problem. Hmm. Frederick, radiators, thank you. You're exactly right, especially with those, um... Yes, with the drills, that definitely helps. Maybe I'll put these up here. Oh, you have a hard time deploying from there sometimes. I'll do some large ones, why not? <laughs> those are so big. They're always really fragile, too. So I'm going to tuck these in and just kind of clip them, and we'll just pretend that they have this cool stowage thing. Hopefully that works. I'll also make those on Action Group 5, just so everything toggles at the same time and it looks super cool. <laughs> um, you're right. We should definitely have like some kind of antenna. I'm just going to throw something on there, even though it's not going to be accurate. But just kind of for fun, we'll act like it's not necessary in the game type I'm playing. But here. That looks weird. I don't like the way that looks. Oh. Right. <laughs> Which way does this extend? Oh, yeah. From inside a fairing. Just like how it would not work at all. Uh, how's it looking? I feel like we've got... Um, I think we've got pretty good... Someone said, um, Tim, everyday cosmonaut or astronaut? Well, don't forget the suit you wear does not actually determine what country or country of origin. Uh, when U.S. astronauts fly on Soyuz, they wear the Sokol suit. They're wearing uh, a Russian suit. It doesn't mean they're a cosmonaut. So the, you're, the, like, what, what you are is where you're from, not what you're wearing. So even if I'm wearing a Russian high-altitude flight suit, I would be an astronaut because of my country of origin. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> Kevin, hopefully that answers that question. I'll, I'll answer a few more questions once we finish this build. Let's do just a quick shakedown of this while it's here on the ground. I'm nervous these landing legs won't work. And I'm also nervous that let's do an uncrewed version and just make sure our thrust to weight ratio is above one. Okay, looking good. We're just going to do a quick little like systems check of it on the pad. And while we do that, uh, Kevin Ray yeah, answered, thank you. Uh, Mitchell, <laughs> just because of your beautiful beard. I have a horrible beard, but thank you. <laughs> I'm sure, honestly, you could. yours is probably as good as mine, because mine is about, mine's not very good. Uh, so thank you, Mitchell. Matthew, hope to see you next year in Dallas on a live show. I think, we, I think we'll do that for our, our ludicrous future. I feel like I need to tell people about this way more often. People are like, Tim, why... It's been so long since you made a video. Why aren't you talking about this? It's like every week I talk about all this stuff on a podcast already. I just think people don't realize that I have a podcast that I'm a part of. It's called Our Ludicrous Future. I think there's a link in the description. If you guys want more of me talking about space stuff and you want to hear me like reacting to Starship updates and stuff like that, um, Our Ludicrous Future is where I do that. And um, look at this. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, so that's working. Um, yeah, so if, you, if you're one of those people that thinks that I'm working too long on the Aerospike video or something like that, I've got you covered already, guys. Our Ludicrous Future. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on whatever podcast you listen to. Um, yeah. All right, let's, let's go ahead and I'm going to throttle up, make sure this thing can fly okay. Let's try and divert over real quick and send this thing over to, like, some grass and make sure we can refuel it and all that stuff. Just do a quick little system check. Make sure everything's looking good. I don't want to try to refuel from cement. For some reason, that just kind of seems weird. <laughs> this is kind of like Starhopper's first flight. Oh, God. Not yet. 
my range of control is way less sensitive than I used to, actually. Normally I have like a, an above one to one thrust to weight ratio by a lot. And it's like one click increments, and this is like many, many clicks increments, so I'm just not used to this. It's actually, it should be really easy to fly. Like this, nice and smooth. Really, the pogo thing again? Really, Kerbal? Really? For like the softest touchdown in the world? <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, man. Well, whoa, look at this. What is this? Zero G? What is. <laughs> What? 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 <laughs> what exactly is happening right now? Are radiators lighter than air? Okay, well. <laughs> oh, that stinks, guys. I don't know what to do because I, I messed around with that for freaking ever last time. Um, I still don't know the best way to solve that. Maybe I'll go back to eight legs because I at least had some success landing on eight legs before. Sorry that it's not quite Starship prototype Mark One a bull, but it's good enough. I should probably also make sure a Kerbal can get out of this hatch. That sounds like a thing that I would normally forget to do. Um, so I need to put them in the. Uh, where's that one? Wait, M where's the MK1 lander can? What? Man, I... Oh, there we go. Here you go, scientist or engineer, whatever you are. Javon, you're going to you're gonna test this out for me. No, you want the springs to minimum. And when we had... um, When we had damper to max, it ended up just doing the bouncing thing. Um, Sonar, pilot audio, thanks for your dedication and efforts. Great to see Elon engaging with you so much. I'll bet he's a patron. <laughs> I don't know if he is. That'd be weird. That'd be crazy. Uh, but thank you. Random stuff fixer. Tips Fedora. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Chris, I like how your everyday astronaut was put on the ISS by an everyday astronaut. It's true. That's a legit thing. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Uh, 3D fix. I can't help but look at Starship and feel like all the bumps on the servers will cause vibrations and problems. Is that final build quality or not? Nah? Looks shoddy. Well, don't forget these first prototypes are like way just built as cheap and inexpensively and easily as possible with the minimum path to like completion as possible, just making it as simple as they can. So they really aren't, the fit and finish isn't great for now. Um, you can already tell a pretty big difference in fit and finish between MK1 and MK2, the one out in Florida versus this one. So, well, this seems to work okay. Um, you can see some, so those little ripples don't make a huge effect compared to <laughs> the mass of the vehicle and all that stuff. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Okay. Let's, let's check these legs out again real quick and see if we can't just, um, I'm not going to worry about MVAC engines on this. We have way, way too much Delta V already. Like I said. Uh-oh, 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 wrong button. If we can recover from this, it'll be amazing. We won't. Meant to do that, totally. Totally meant to do that. Yeah, I know that Mark 1 and Mark 2. Sorry, I know. Sorry, I sorry that I said MK1. I know it's pronounced Mark. Mark. Mark 1. Oh, man. Okay, let's try this. What did I do? Oh, yeah. Here's what I did wrong. I clicked radial in, so the nose tried to point to the ground. This is definitely one of my best tips if you are working on, like, landing a vehicle. Um, 
And as long as you're not in orbital mode, because that'll flip it too. Weep. <laughs> but holding, uh, I don't remember who told me this. Someone probably in our Discord. But if you uh, if you hold out, the nose will stay pointed up. As opposed to like if you hold retro, uh, retrograde. What's going to happen is say you all of a sudden uh, you know bleed off too much velocity and you start going back up again. It's going to try to flip around and follow retrograde, and that, my friends, is not fun. So this is a, a great way to, to learn how to hover, is to just have the computer automatically hold nose up. And then you can just worry about throttle and, and moving the ship around with. And I, I do two hands. Um, I, I, I keybind like return and shift. Um, I gotta make sure this is really soft, sorry, I'm concentrating. Key, return and shift to my right hand. Um, and then like question mark and quotes to full throttle and throttle cut. That way I can do throttle with one hand and then I can do like the typical ASWD stuff or whatever for the other controls. Still doing it. That sucks. That's just really annoying. Uh. Dang it. Let's double check our, we do have our damper strength to maximum. Let's increase slightly spring strength, decrease slightly damper. I don't know. We'll see if we can figure this out. We could use robotic pistons. Are the robotic pistons better? There aren't any bigger legs, unfortunately. It's true. It does have more. It does have more uh, fuel than it would land on Mars, most likely. Although I have it pretty stripped down right now. Um, hey there, action uh, from uh, Azerbaijan. Awesome. You're welcome. Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for being in here. And heavy cream. I, if you had to guess, do you think solar arrays will extend from aft like shown before, or they figure out a workaround for space and weight? I think they'll do something similar to how we have them, like mounted on the aft end. Um, something similar to some of the first prototypes we ever saw. I'm guessing it'll be something like that-ish. My, yeah, my ship just might be too heavy. We can try some robotic legs. That's actually a great idea. Um, let's just go straight up and straight down. I don't need to worry about the refueling. I'm sure I'm fine with that. Still kind of doing that thing. So dumb. <laughs> How long will this last? What if I induce some th thrust ridge at the top? <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> Great. Oh, I also have the canards mobile. It looks like we don't want that. Um, thanks, Matt, Matt for into space and beyond. Love your content. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks for saying hi. Um, what were, re, spring strength was already at the minimum earlier. I think we need to just go with robotic legs. Um, and I'm not sure how much fuel we're going to land on with Mars, so I don't want to totally lighten. I want these just to be beefy legs. Let's try just using pistons in here uh, and the robotics, the new robotics, because these are going to be pretty strong, too. I'm just going to attach six of them like this. I'm going to tuck these babies in. This might be the way to do it anyway, just because they look awesome. <laughs> Actually, maybe I should attach, you know what I should do? I should definitely attach these to this main portion of the ship. Um, just in case there's anything happening with, like, this decoupler and stuff in the engine plate. Okay, let me preset the... I'm gonna pin this so I don't lose it when I push it in there. Oh, pff, lost it when I push it in there anyway. Thanks. <laughs> Kerbal! Okay, that seems reasonable. I mean, it's very packed tight in there. Um, 
That's actually kind of cool. That kind of looks the part better, to be honest. Okay, let's increase this. And then let's put their max extension at two-ish. That's plenty. Okay. Now let's bind those to landing gear. Gear. Toggle extension or toggle, toggle piston. Yeah. I think this will work. Let's see. Let's see if this helps. Mm. While we're waiting for this to load, guys, check this out. People were asking about uh, grid finale coasters because we have this is the old one. Look at this. Slightly updated version 2.0. Notice that it's got like it's a little more realistic. Just a touch. This is the new one. Old one. New one. These will be in the shop, I think, next week. Um, people were also asking about, we do have signed prints. Those were, signed prints are available right now to um, Patreon supporters. Um, but we sold out of the Starman hoodies before it even got public. I'm sorry, guys. I ordered 50 of them. Nervous that this, a year ago, basically, I ordered 50 of them, thinking there's no way I'll sell 50. And they sold out before they even went public. So if you were one of those people trying to get a Starman hoodie, I... Don't ask. I'm so sorry. That was the biggest headache of my life. And I don't want to talk about it. We're going to try and do like a round two version that's maybe a simplified version. Because um, I do feel really bad. I had so many people that wanted one of those. Um, what is going on? This is acting weird. Why is it rocking around the Christmas tree? Like the something, something stuff. Um, but I think we're gonna try to do like a simplified version of the hoodie someday. That's just like a normal hoodie and not like this crazy bespoke, like custom hand stitch, like insane piece of <laughs> hoodie. Um, let's see if we can handle a decent landing. I think so. That's pretty great, actually. We have a lot of fuel in this thing still. We are heavy. I, I, We're quite heavy. So if it can handle this. Let's see what happens to if I lower it. Can it survive sitting on its engine bell? Doesn't like it. Does not like it at all. Ooh, and those are still clipped in. Man, something about this structural tube is not happy. Um, To lock the pistons for landing. Ooh, would that... Make them stronger if they're locked. Oh, it does seem that way, doesn't it? Maybe they'll crawl around just a little bit more or a little less. I mean, uh oh. Abort. Oh no. Gosh, you know what this means. You all know what time this is. When things get too out of control. Okay, controls are backwards. Why don't I flip? 180 degrees, there we go. I'm having a very, 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 very hard time controlling this. Controls are still, some of them are backwards. Dang it. This is hard. Well, time to practice a real landing. Why don't I fly up really high? Give myself plenty of time to recenter. There we go. Okay. Just had to abort out of that one. Sorry, guys. 
Um, plus the rubber pads that go on the bottom of the pistons for grip. There's rubber pads that I can add? Tell me more about the sloppy. I don't know what you're talking about. I think you're making stuff up. Now this is a suicide burn. Still seems overly sensitive. I might actually have to lower the gimbals just a touch. They're a little crazy. The added pads? Okay, I am in then. Uh-oh. I'm definitely into landing actually pads. Look at that. When the ship's light enough, it, that was great. Okay, well, let's practice our... Now that we did this, I will definitely do pads. <laughs> All right, six to deploy the drills. And seven to start mining. Look at that. There we go. Now time warp. Let's watch this baby refuel. Let's see if the landing legs can handle it. Ooh, the fact that the... That's not good. The fact that my uh, solar panels are stacked actually makes it so that the top ones are basically blocking the bottom ones. But now it's... Hmm. We get fully fueled. And actually wants to get off to an angle. Huh, I should have considered that, huh? Well, anyway, it'll work. Maybe we need to... Mars actually has four times less solar power, so we need to really organize our solar panels to not be dumb, I guess. All right, let's... I want to check out the landing leg, the landing pads you guys are talking about. Are they in, under robotics? Is it a click thing? Where are they, guys? Motorized damping. <laughs> Not in robotics. Utility? I've never seen landing pads before. I will be quite shocked. Ground? Thermal? Electrical, comms, coupling, payload. Um, structural. Okay, thanks, guys. This is going to be another time where I have no idea what I'm looking for. Cause I'm, oh. <gasps> Look. Guys. Literally... Let me read this to you. A medium sized non slip pad so that the feet of your mecha bot do not slip out from under it on the shifty sands of Duna, which is right where we're going, comes in two form factors uh, and three grip levels. Holy crap, that's awesome, actually. This is, this is like the best news ever. They're kind of ugly. I'm going to go with medium, and that just looks horrible. You know, you got to have a little bit of form with your, a little bit of function. Wait, form with your function? Sure. Why is it not just cleanly binding? Hmm. Let me start over. Just click it. Just... Go to your home. That's weird that they don't like bind. You know what? I'm going to put them at an angle too. That's what I'm going to do. Sweet. And then, oh, round. High grip. Wow. What do you mean it's upside? The pad's upside down? Is 
Yeah, I was holding down alt and it wasn't working. You think it's upside down? I mean, I know nothing about these, but... I'm trying to center that a little better. It's not upside down, I don't think. Uh, Mike wants to know if I'm going to create a canard coaster. Not planning on it. Hi, and also, hi, Paul. It's been a while. How are you? I'll test. I am going to push these in just a little bit because it just looked funny when they're retracted. Still looks really funny when they're retracted. <laughs> maybe I should put them inside like a cool fairing or something. That'd be cool. Also, maybe lower the angle a little bit. Maybe I'll raise them up a little bit. Push them in a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to just do this. Just just purely for looks. Cool. Okay, let's retract them fully at the start. Let's test these out. Not realism overhaul. This is all. This is all stock, um, and it's uh, uses the what's it called the breaking ground DLC package that has the robotics. Z man, I should try playing on console. Why would I do that when it's just a more stripped down, harder to well probably because it's harder to play and be a challenge. Touche. <laughs> um, ooh, they're installing the shrouds and the flaps right now. Not as clean looking as they were in Elon's video. Well. Again, these Mark 1 and Mark 2 prototypes are just literally kind of being thrown together, you know. Um, here, I wanted to show you guys this. Look at, um, while that's loading. Oh, I don't have that. That stuff's not listed publicly yet still, is it? Oh, I do have a, a rapid unscheduled discount section now. So I'm trying to clear up some old inventory because I do runs of things. I don't do print on demand. My whole store is actually runs of things. So if you guys, if you click in here, some of this stuff is like super cheap, basically just right at cost pretty much just to clear up room and make room because we have a lot of stuff coming in. Um, yeah. Friendly reminder. Oh, these are back in stock too now. The utility pouches, mini moon lamps. These will be in next week. So yeah, there you go. There's your PSA. Okay. Let's see if this actually works now. Should I be locking them still? Someone else mentioned locking them. Pretty rough landing. Break the pad. Okay, let's fly out of the rise out of the ashes like a phoenix. From the ashes we rise. <laughs> let's go divert. This is basically what Starship Abort would be like, to be honest, because it can't act like no abort system ever gets in front of the shockwave, guys. Like just so you know that it's not the, a shockwave is literally going at the speed of sound, and you're not going to instantly accelerate beyond the speed of you're not even get to the speed of sound without crushing people uh within the amount of time the abort system is firing so um the point of it is to get away from debris and shrapnel and things like that and not have your crew landing on a uh exploding war zone basically they're safe ish inside the pressure vessel from the shock wave um but an abort system really is just to get out of there just to get away from stuff not necessarily like to outrun anything it's not outrunning danger really um on a senate it can help outrun danger a little bit but on the pad it's mostly just to get out of there so starship elon talked about it the other day that um if it were to have like if it were to abort they would rapidly spin up the raptors and it'd at least be able to fly away you know and not just fall 100 meters basically um onto an explosion Hey, that's pretty great. Honestly, that's a solid set of landing legs. All right. What do you guys think? Pretty great. Should I try lock? Should I make it so they do lock? It is a little top heavy, but not a big deal. I'm going to try this. 
Try to straighten her out. And then locking the landing gear. That helps. I didn't do anything about the solar panels, did I? <laughs> okay, let's see if... Um, I gotta fix the solar panels and then let's let's do it. I'll put a lock in the action group. I agree with that. Um, well, actually, zero was those lock. Let's make it so four. Um, I wish I had another. Let's. I don't have an SAS, a, a launch abort system. So let's do ahead and go ahead and do that. Toggle lock. So I'll just hit gear and then lock it with that. So just for, I know, here's what we're going to do. Remember how I fanned those out? Let's unfan them. One, two, and one. And just see if they overlap less now. Probably not enough, to be honest. The other thing is, I could make it so when we land, after we land, we could move these in a little bit. Um, just so we don't have parts clipping I, I don't it doesn't really matter if the parts are clipping in you know on the game but that could be kind of cool yeah we'll just do that we'll fan these out quite a bit there we go that'll help with with solar panel surface area Something like, sorry, concentration face. Something like this. Cool. Um, no, I've never played Elite Dangerous. I don't really know what that is, to be honest. Okay, I think we're good to go there. Um, what else do we need to do? Um, fuel cells don't work when you're trying to create fuel because they're, or are they, are they efficient enough to run an ISRU and have an ISRU make more fuel than they consume? That seems like that's, even if, I'm against that because <laughs> that's like a, uh, what's that type of machine called? Like a backwards fake machine thing. I can't think of what it's called. Um, uh, someone, mom, help. What's that called? <sighs> I'll never know. I'll never know. And yo, I don't know, really know Elite Dangerous. I've heard of it, but. I don't know. I don't really play any games besides this game. Why would I? Um, perpetual motion machine. Thank you, guys. <laughs> We'd get there someday. Okay. Just to solidify this. This is the hard part, though. It's making this thing solid enough. And I, and I know that the engine plate will... Well, let's do a structural tube. For just a tiny little one to stuff the avionics and stuff in there. Because I do want to try to land this too. Just making sure that comes with it. Okay. Good. Okay. It needs its own battery. And it also probably could use its own reaction wheel just for fun. Looking good. This thing's going to be huge, so we are going to go ahead and put eight like this. I do it like this so that we have roll control, because those can fire opposite each other. Uh, it'd take a lot of RTGs to power an ISRU system, so that won't work. That would not be mass efficient. Okay, here's one of them. Da, da, da. Dun, da, da, da. Hmm. I was thinking about. Part, part, grandparent, part, grandparent, part, yeah. Grandparent, part, one, two, three, grandparents, grandparents. Let's hear it for grandparents. Let's see. 
Um, we're going to try, in order to land this, I think I'm going to have to do the thing you guys were talking about a second ago. I think it's going to have to have, or we're going to have to do the same robotic landing legs because I don't think the stock landing legs will be anywhere near capable. Okay, are we going to have a, an above 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio? The answer is, ladies and gentlemen, yes, yes we are. That's impressive. Okay. We can raise the music a touch, just a little. It's a lot of thrusters, but this is a lot of rocket though too. So you gotta, you gotta have the right amount of thrusters to be able to maneuver this thing for re-entry. I mean, don't forget each of those, the pods on the Falcon 9, there's only two of them, but each one of them has four thrusters on them so they can articulate in all directions. Um, Z-Man wants to know, they want to start their own, he, he wants to start his own, I assume with Z-Man, wants to start his own uh, mu space music YouTube channel, uh, or space YouTube channel, not music, space YouTube channel. My number one tip is start, period, period. Uh, otherwise, you'll get stuck trying to figure out what you're going to do, and you won't know what you're going to do until you start doing it. That's just the way it is. Um, there's a graveyard of people that <laughs> that never start one, or that the end of their YouTube careers that they never start. You know, they <laughs> like I I never knew what to do, so I just I don't know. You know, it's like that's the number one killer of YouTube channels is not even starting. Uh, so that would be my advice: is literally just start. They're going to be terrible. At the, if you look at my videos from two and a half years ago when I started, it is the most cringy thing you'll ever see in your life. It looks like it was color graded by a four-year-old. Um, they're bad videos. And I'm like yelling at the camera. The audio is terrible. The video is terrible. That's called the start of a YouTube channel. <laughs> That's just what it is, you know. Uh, and you'll learn from it. You'll learn from feedback because it's the internet. You're going to hear plenty of feedback. Um, and you'll learn what kind of product your best. And oopsies. You'll learn what kind of product you know, you should make and find your niche and find your voice. It, but it takes, it takes getting started so you even know uh, what that's even remotely like, you know. I'm going to do this. But I'm going to tuck these in because they are ugly. Work they may, but they are ugly. And I'm actually going to need these. Since these need to be, for this really tall thing, they actually better be really, really wide, shouldn't they? There we go. I'm gonna put try to put these behind some like cowlings again, just so it doesn't look terrible. And just so, just for my like OCD sake, I don't want <laughs> those things totally covered up. I have no idea if that's gonna be able to support the weight. Um, I'm gonna also do fuel like this so that the last one, so we lower our center of mass, is this last fuel tank, so it'll, that'll drain last. Um, photoshopping tutorials were kind of fun. I'll, I'll, I'll admit that that was pretty fun. Um, and I know this is disobeying literally everything I talked about in that last video, but you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to be fighting, fighting that, that's for sure. I'm also going to make it so these gimbals are pretty low. The next line of gimbals is a little higher. Hopefully that's enough control authority. And actually, to be honest, just for just so this thing is a little more stable on ascent, I might have to do something like this. That looks kind of cool anyway. Okay, okay. Um, in our Discord, they're having a discussion on why you can't outrun a, a shockwave. Again, a shockwave is traveling at the speed of sound, period. That's what a shockwave is. It's actually the compression of something that's traveling at supersonic and then the shockwave and the transition of whatever. It's, it travels at the speed of sound. Um, it can't go supersonic unless you compress it and expand it in a de Laval nozzle, basically. So a shockwave goes at the speed of sound. By the time it explodes, within 10 milliseconds, think about how far away it is. Like, it's already going to go beyond your your entire vessel before the vessel even realizes it's 
you know, blown up. And before it's a abort system even ignites. And then say the abort system ignites, say it's pulling 15 Gs. How long? I think it takes something like, I don't know, 10 seconds of 15 Gs to be able to get up to Mach 1. Someone find it for me. You, you can't, can't do it. <laughs> okay, so that's that answer. I think we're ready to... Man, this... Should I just go for it? Should I just totally go for it? <laughs> um, I could use air brakes up here. Yeah, why not? Th that'll look a little better and they can tuck away. They don't provide very good control in the, like aerodynamically. Um, but we can try it anyway. <laughs> um... Could you surf the shockwave is the question. I have no idea. And Austin's right. With my running skills, I could easily outrun it myself. Obviously. I, I don't know, actually. I don't know if you can, if it's possible to surf a, a shockwave, a, a blast wave. I have no idea. Um, one of the things we need to do before we launch this thing is we need to send it or align the planets first. And we need to stuff it full of some... Poor, 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 poor Kerbals that might not, very well might not make it back. They're just going to ride a totally untested vehicle. Why not? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tuck these in more. Um, I'm going to make their extension three. Duh, why didn't I think of this? And tuck them in so that um, when they're totally retracted, you don't really see them. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> should we put it, a bunch of Kerbals or should we just put like five? I feel like five is plenty risky. Okay. They have parachutes. They're fine, right? Let's put someone up in the, in the cupola. Here you go. Pilot. And then in the hitchhiker storage, or there's another, like, I know, there's a lander can. Let's put them only in things that they can, like, fly in for some reason. I don't want them just in an empty thing. We're going to send three. That's what we're doing. Only three. They have, I forget that they have, like, little clothes now. Oh, blue. I like blue. I've never seen blue. That'll stand out well on the red surface of Mars. Okay, so Starship to Mars. This is crazy. Put a small truss. It'll act like a crush zone. Um, Michael wants to know how I like my Tesla Model 3. I, it's it's the, the best car I've ever had in my life. I had a lot. Um, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, it updates itself. It gets better every day. Like... It's, I've already put 26,000 miles on it and just right over a year, it's incredible. It's fast, it's quiet, it's perfect. I don't know, it's been amazing, honestly. And I'm a huge car guy. Like I used to take apart cars all the time. Like I used to tune cars when I was younger. I used to swap turbochargers. Like I did different, tur I was a Mazda guy for some reason. I had like tons of Mazdas. My last car before that though was a BMW, um, before the Tesla. I like cars a lot. I like good handling cars. I like fast cars. Um, and this ticks off every box in ways that I didn't even know I needed ticked off. And it's absolutely amazing. Okay, 50 days until transfer. Oh, great. A year and a... <laughs> this is pretty nice, though, that you can have an actual time until transfer thing. A year and we have some time here, my friends. What's up, Ghost Rider? How you doing? <laughs> uh, Mitchell says KSP is not a game. KSP is life. <laughs> it's true. It is kind of true. Uh, H Clifton twenty five. Hey there, Tim. Hope you're doing well. Quick question: Do you think the later generations of Starship will utilize an MMRTP, like the Curiosity rover? I think Star something the size of Starship is actually going to have to have a proper nuclear generator. Solar can work. And solar's getting better and becomes more of an option. Man, we have a whole year. Sorry, I'm like, really? <laughs> um, yeah, so Mars, because Mars 
already is four times weaker solar. It's, tw it's twice as far away, so that means the solar light that hits it has four times less energy thanks to the square inverse law. So it kind of sucks. Like, it kind of sucks to have to use solar. And so, again, like, imagine how much it would actually take to run a fuel plant here and, and all the electricity for a, a colony. Like, now you have to take four times that to the surface of Mars. I, I think a small nuclear, gen an actual nuclear generator, not, not, not an RTG, might be a really, really good answer. Am I doing this right, by the way, guys? Um... Yeah, an RTG is a radio nuclear new whatever generator. <laughs> radio thumer thermonuclear generator. Radio radioisotopic thermonucleic generator. Something like I don't remember. It's a thing in the Martian where he picks it up uh, and he uses it as a heat source for inside the rover. Um, not recommended. But radioisotope thermoelectric generator. There we go. <laughs> Um, nuclear is great for a power supply. Um, yeah, nuclear is a great option. I don't know why we got so scared of, of nuclear, but especially for space and, and like weight ratio and all that stuff and, and lasting a long time, having a, a consistent, safe, reliable output, nuclear is an amazing option. Um, well, yeah, fusion would be great, but for now, I mean, we could even just use a simple fission reactor. Nuclear is the best source of energy. Okay, uh, we're coming up on our transfer window, finally. The mods we're using are basically none except for Kerbal Engineers, and then we have Kerbal Engineer um, for our like our readouts and stuff. And then we have the DLC, the robotic DLC. Did I miss it? Where? Okay, there it is. Just making sure. I probably could have just gone with that last window. This is, why does this take so long? Why can't you auto warp to your transfer window? Like, we've been sitting here for five minutes waiting for the planets to align. I mean, granted, that's nothing compared to waiting two years, like, in real life. But still, it's not the most convenient thing. So we're just waiting. I, I, I don't want to see these. How do I not see them again? There we go. Declutter a little bit. 19 days, 15. We can... Our window's probably plenty big. Like, I'm sure we could... What's going on? 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Okay, here we go. Kerbal alarm clock will warp to your transformers. That sounds pretty nice. I want I'm gonna launch this in the day. Because I'm spoiled. Okay. Let's get this thing out to the launch pad. What is it called? Starship to Mars? Starship to Mars. Let's, we need to put the Kerbals back in. Oh, it gave us one, it kept one Kerbal for us. Thank you, Kerbal. That was very nice of you. Oh, this is probably from the last time we tested it. Did it save all of our things? I hope it saved our things. You need to go in here. I want all of you to have those schnazzy blue suits. Those are super cool. Here we go. This might not go well, guys. Well, hang on. Uh, thrust weight for nuclear-powered thrust isn't great, says uh, she, she, Sharia, Sharia. Um, but you know, um, their thrust weight—that's th th why they're great for space. Thrust weight ratio really doesn't matter in space, but having 800, 900, 1,000 seconds of specific impulse is amazing. So yeah. Um. Dude three two one zero one two three four five six says, "I hope that's not your password to something, because I just read it out loud." <laughs> three two one zero one two three four five six says, "Talking about nuclear, how much better would the Starship be in getting faster or going further, approximately?" Well, if you're talking about nuclear engines, sorry, we're kind of kind of switched subjects. Nuclear engines versus nuclear power. Nuclear engines massively extend would would significantly extend the amount of payload they could take to the surface of Mars. Like, I would guess three times. You could probably land like 300 tons to the surface of Mars. With the same architect architecture otherwise, just swapping like three Raptor engines for three nuclear engines would be incredible. 
would be super cool. Okay, well, are you guys ready for uh, to see if this is going to do anything? Okay, you're right, launch song. Okay, launch song. What song did we do for that? Um, did I even put that on this album? Wait, what's the launch song? <laughs> do I have this on the album? Which song are we doing? This is Go For Lift Off. I don't know what you guys want. I don't know. I don't want to like sit here and wait. Um, play Starman? That's not a song. <laughs> Let the bodies hit the floor. My intro song, is that the... Okay, that sounds fair. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. Three, two, one, hip hip. <laughs> this is very untested. <laughs> <laughs> this is very untested. I'm actually like nervous right now. I've never just well, I do sometimes. But like we've got people on board here. We got these little we got these little kerbals we gotta take care of. And we're trying to actually get out to Mars? Guys, this is spooky. We don't need to refuel this rocket since it's the Kerbal system. We have plenty of uh oh uh oh. We do not want those air brakes to Oh, we do not want these to do anything right now. That could have been bad. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, abort. This happened last, that one time. I lost our engines. We are screwed. The engines broke. I don't get, something in this is a weak link and we are totally screwed. The best thing we can do right now is try to deploy the flaps and just hope for the best. But it's not going to be pretty. I am sorry, you guys have to witness this. This is very bad. For some reason, the engines. Okay, why did we lose engines? You can hear, still hear the booster way too loud for some reason. <laughs> oh, guys. Why did that decoupler fail? Oh yeah, they can EVA and pull shoots. <laughs> this is kind of spooky, the hatches are what do you mean the hatches are blocked? They don't seem to be blocked. Oh no. Oh no. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe they'll survive. Maybe not. cheery music as as flames rain down on the near the launch pad dang it I'm not gonna reset we have to accept the fact of what happened to the the fate of our poor Kerbals poor poor Kerbals <sighs> pay respects everybody pay respects um Staging wouldn't have done anything. I didn't have engines. Music's going back down. Okay, okay. Let's, um. Oh, Peter says, finally caught a live stream so I can donate. Hey, Peter, how's it going? Thanks for saying hi. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for catching the live stream. Uh, Trevor says, we should use liquid fl uh, fluoride thorium reactors, LFTR, on Mars. Thorium is half-life of 14.5 billion years. It's more abundant than uranium and safe. I don't really know anything about that stuff, so I'll just say probably. Sounds good to me. Um, I'm trying to think of, we better have these at zero authority limit for now. 
Do I live in a shipping lane? Can you guys hear that? I live in the middle of Iowa. That sounds like a full-blown cargo ship. Just, just entered port and is going nuts. Okay. Yeah, we need more struts. This might be a case of where we need actual struts. I think it's this engine plate is like really weak with this structural tube. Because I had this problem when we were dinking around with this the other day. We might actually have to do manual struttage, believe it or not. Shocking, I know. Just add a few like this in between stages. Sturdier up a little bit. Come on. Did that do it? Are those connected to different parts? Okay, let's do... Manually strut a couple of these. I know this seems really weird, but auto strut for some reason just doesn't like some of the stuff. So we better just stitch it up like this. <laughs> I know it looks weird. But sometimes you just gotta gotta play the game's game, you know. Stitch her on up. There we go. Riveted. Riveted together. Um, like flying planes, I appreciate uh, you telling me that my gravity turn is wrong. We're doing okay, though. I I'm more worried about pitching this big, massive surface area over when it's this weak and wobbly. Um, I'm more worried about that right now than I am having a perfectly efficient gravi gravity turn. Um, it'll just break in the atmosphere. So I'm just playing it easy. Don't you worry, my friend. We're not, not everything has to be perfect. Uh, just good enough. I want a pilot. Why isn't there, why don't I have any pilots? Here we go. Give me some more pilots. <laughs> there we go. I like these blue suits. Should I try to make it so they could escape out the hatch? I don't know how to do that though, because technically, Technically, these are inside the fairing. The The cupola is inside the fairing. I guess I could transfer them down to this hatch and try to get them out of there, but who knows? Let's try it again. <laughs> kills, James says, kills pilots? Why don't I have any pilots? <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't have to work perfect. Um. All right. Sorry, I'm just trying to double check here. I've got a lot of stuff trying to go on this weekend. Big time. Um. Whew. Yeah, I might need to answer that one quick. All right. Um, <laughs> Siggy says, uh, plays their life on Mars by David Bowie. Well, there's a reason I use my own music is so I don't, you don't, we don't have copyright strikes because that's always a huge thing. And, and more for me, it's more about the future. Like what happens in five, 10 years if a law changes or something. I don't want to have like a channel randomly demonetized for a video that used a copyright song like five years ago or something or have some weird thing. I'm just always like, whatever, we'll just use my own music. Um, which, by the way, don't forget, you can actually... My music is everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, all that stuff. Um, if you like what you're listening to, you can listen to it um, there. Okay. And, oh, also, Alexander says... Uh, or Alex, Alexander Zio, they call him Jebediah because he died. Murderer. Hey, come on. I'm sorry. <sighs> no, we don't have to wait for another launch window. We're, we're launching only a few minutes after <laughs> the last attempt, so we're perfectly fine there. All right. Here we go. We're just gonna give this another go. See if this works any better. And uh, three, two, one, pip. I don't even care about the music. Sorry. I want to get to Mars. Okay. Let's see. And maybe it's the type of thing I might turn on um, precision control down here, so just in case it starts to induce some kind of wobble, it won't. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to turn do the gravity turn even later, just so we don't have like almost any um, aerodynamic stresses at all. This is attempt number two. Um, I yes, I'm very excited about Kerbal Two. Very excited. It looks like it'll be awesome. I did disable the air brakes. That was definitely a big part of it. Is that I had those accidentally enabled during ascent. They work backwards when they're reversed like this on ascent. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try to do this without without quick saves and reverts. That's the way I like to try to play. Just for those of you wondering. Okay, now we can start to do our gravity turn. And like I said, we're gonna take it nice and easy because this thing is fragile. And with the super heavy booster too, we uh, we are gonna try to land it back on land. So I do need to have enough. It'd be nice if I don't have it totally going super down range. We haven't tried landing the booster at all once even, so uh, I don't know how these legs are gonna handle it. Uh oh, getting some oscillations. They seem to have settled, okay. So I need to leave about 50, or maybe, I don't know how much Delta V for the up. <laughs> this is going to be very interesting. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it 600 meters per second to turn around, but it'll be a lot more once we get rid of the upper stage. Oh God, I have no idea what I'm doing. Quick save. There's no way there's gonna be enough fuel for this, but whatever. Get out of here. Trying not to blow up the lower part. We're gonna get this to where we have enough room to catch the other thing. Yeah, because we have to do this stupid game. We have to get this out of the atmosphere quick so that we can catch it later on. Transfer back to the other ship. It's such a weird thing to make us do. Hang on. If, if two vehicles are flying in the atmosphere, it does this really weird thing that's super annoying. Now I'm letting it coast too long, too, so it's further away. That's not smart. Okay, let's do our flip on this. See, now we have 1,500 meters per second. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, those are some G-forces. Let's settle this down just a notch. Oh, I forgot the... <laughs> I forgot some important things. Uh, I'm going to do this. So I can actually see where about where we're going to land. Oh, God, this is going to be bad. Where is the trajectory? Oh, wow, we have a long ways to go. A long ways to go. What is that? A giant triangle? What is that, some kind of spooky triangle? There's no way we're gonna make it. <laughs> no way. Only 600 meters per second left. Five hundred meters per second left. Okay. Now we gotta try and catch this. Get out of here, trajectory. You're ugly. No, see this is what I was oh no. Why does it do this? No way did I mess it up forever. Am I totally screwed? Can't use up oh, can't use nearby things because it's not well guess what? You can't switch it because you're in the atmosphere. No, not target. Crap. <laughs> we may have just killed another set of curvals. 
I can't. Could I go to the space? If I go to the tracking center, it might be too late. Oh, God. Oh, man. Siggy, frick, I even turned on my VPN because Super Chat isn't supported in Iceland. But yeah, keep up. Keep, oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Siggy. That's awesome. My man didn't even read my second Super Chat. Hey, I was getting at it. I was from the middle of flying people to Mars, maybe. Only not at all. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, Siggy. You don't have to, you don't have to keep Super Chatting. I, I do apologize for that. Okay, so landed at KSC. What are you talking about? What? Are they just gone now? Did I just... Is that the end? Did I just kill him? Ready to launch? Really? What the heck? Where did it go? I don't know what it's talking about. But yeah, let's let's see this. Landed at KSC. I'm very curious what you're talking about. How do I? Why can't I click on it? What are you what are you doing? Are these just pieces? What did I cheat in my own how did I what did I cheat with? We haven't done any we haven't done anything. Yet. I'm just trying to... I went back to the thing. Dang it. How do you... Why can't I click to, like, fly it? Well, I'm very confused now. Yeah, it didn't save that suborbital state. Dang it. I don't think I reverted, though. Maybe I did. Okay, I did. We're going to pretend that we killed him, though, and we're going to make a little adjustment here, my friends. Here's what we're going to do. Okay, yeah, they, they didn't die. Whoops. Uh, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Yeah, I do need Flight Manager. What is that one? Flight Manager FMRS. Jump back and forth in time. I don't want to... I don't want that. I just want to be able to switch at any point in the atmosphere and all that stuff. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Siggy, you're not my mom. I can donate as much as I want. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue. Oh, the other thing that would really help our our booster landing would actually be being able to cut some of these engines. That'll make it so we have a lot less sensitive landing. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a good amount of tankage here. Let's see how much more delta V that gives us. Make sure we're not exceeding our fl our thrust to weight ratio. How much does that say? Why does it only say one thousand? That's not very much altogether. What what is the difference between this and this? One thousand sixty three versus one. Th that's quite a bit. Another hundred meters per second with the upper stack. Um, Maybe I should do an even bigger tank, though. Why not? When in Kerbal. Which one did I just use? Was I using that one? I don't remember. Oh, now I have zero. There we go. Three. And let's see. Make sure we have enough thrust to weight ratio. Perfect. That's great. That's just well, exactly what we need. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do it. This is fine. The booster has to be higher. Yeah, I know. I That's what I normally do is I normally try to get the booster out of the atmosphere and the other ship out of the atmosphere. Or, no, what I should do is I should... Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do. This is—I forgot how I used to do this. I've got a, I've got another trick up my sleeve. This will work. I 
I can do this. <laughs> Build a rocket really tall so you just start in space. That's funny. Okay. Okay, here we go. Maybe I shouldn't try worrying about landing the booster. This is our last attempt. If we don't, the booster is very secondary, very, um, we don't care. We're just going to go ahead. Um, we're going to make sure we focus on the starship with the, the crew on it. <laughs> Super heavy water bottles would be dope. Okay. Look at this beautiful, beautiful bird. That looks better anyway. Actually, that looks kind of like more like the correct ratio. Um, I am going to time it to music this time. You guys are lucky now. Ready? This is the one. I'm feeling this. Three, two, one. Hip, hip, go. Oh, there's a huge delay. Yeah. Also, I didn't mean to have this there. That's annoying. Why didn't you guys tell me? Yeah, okay. So let's focus on this thing here and let's actually see how we're doing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be switching, uh, I'm, gonna be f I'm gonna be flipping as soon as we separate stages. I'm actually gonna ignite the engines at the upper stage, switch back to the booster, do the boosters flip, get that kind of centered, and then, yes, I've got this. Someone wants to know why it looks like it's in 15 frames a second, and that's basically because it is. That's one of the things that I just do not like about Kerbal, number one, that I hope Kerbal 2 addresses, is I still have 30 gigs of RAM left. I'm at 16% CPU usage. Like, use my resources. I guarantee my graphics card is just, like, idling. Like, please use me. But for some reason, it's, like, very single-core centric. And it just isn't very good at, like, doesn't really have multi-threading capabilities and things like that. So I hope Kerbal 2 handles physics, uh, real-time physics simulations a little better. Very slow gravity turn. I'm okay with that because we're really gonna focus on altitude because I want to get both of these babies out of the out of the atmosphere. <laughs> slow gravity turn. I'm nervous about that joint. It's so weak and it starts to wobble like that. Did it break? Okay, good. Jeez. This oscillation going on, we gotta stop what we're doing while that happens. It's bending like a hot dog. But we're fighting gravity drag right now while I, if I don't have the thrust to weight ratio all the way up, the throttle all the way up, we're just basically wasting fuel. Very slow gravity turn, I'm okay with this. We have a lot of delta V actually left over, this is good. We added a lot in this booster, and it's going to be doing some work for us. Oh, God. Look at how bendy it is. I hate that. That sucks. Nice and easy. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. If we can get these out of the atmosphere, which I think they're going to do, this will make it, our jobs a lot easier. Okay, it's out of the atmosphere. 600 meters per second left over. Try not to fry that. Okay, get that going. Now turn around. Flip maneuver. Now you see why it's good to have a bunch of thrusters. Bunch of alt attitude control thrusters. I don't want full blown. I'm gonna do the trajectory mod again quick. just totally 
What's complete? I don't know if I need complete, whatever that is. Let's just get it on land. Perfect. Okay. I think trajectories is one of those things that's just an absolute, absolute machine hog. Now we just gotta be able to catch the booster before it goes back into the atmosphere. So as long as this has like a, you know, three minutes or something. Oh, we're gonna land like almost in the mountain range <laughs> with the booster. <laughs> We don't have a ton of Delta V, do we? Yikes. Not nearly as much as I thought we would. Maybe I should have kind of calculated that a little more. Okay, we're almost in orbit though. I don't think 1500 meters per second is enough to get to Mars. This is just a shakedown test. That's what this was. Maybe we should strip it down a little more. Get rid of some of those additional habitats for this, you know, Mark 1 booster. Or we could send a tanker version up and try to refuel it, but that sounds kind of ridiculous too. Let's get it out to 200. Okay, that's plenty of time to... Okay. Siggy, well, hi. Siggy just joined our Discord channel. Wow, that's crazy. Went from chat to hanging out. Hi, Siggy. That's awesome. Uh, our our Discord channel, if you'd like to join, is through Patreon. Uh, it's it's a Patreon exclusive thing, just so we have a really high quality community. That way, we don't have people popping in, trolling us and stuff. It's it's obviously people dedicated. Uh, that actually take all this stuff seriously and like to have fun and it's a really tight knit community and that's really really important to me um, yeah if you want to join our, our tight knit community go to patreon.com slash everyday astronaut I'm gonna scrub off a little bit of velocity even though I don't have much to spare 400 is not a lot I'm just quite nervous that now we're gonna be landing on the mountains but hey we're gonna give it a go um, I'm only going to give it a little bit of this, and we're going to go ahead and deploy the brakes. Oh, we should be fine. I'm going to let it be fairly passive, too. I'm really going to have to nail this suicide burn, aren't I? <laughs> we have very... Very, very little Delta V. It'll be even worse when we get down there. Oh god, and is our center of... I'm nervous about those wings at the bottom. Those might not be good now. You know what we need to do? We need to create some body drag. this. Use that atmosphere to actually slow us down. Oh, robotic part is locked. Dang it! Just ran out of fuel. Just shy. Gear was locked. Doesn't matter anyway. Well, we got close. We got close. We just ran out of fuel. I, if I didn't, hadn't done such a stupid boost back burn, we would have been fine. Um, where is this thing? That's. I hate when. It, sometimes it does this too, where I can't actually switch. Dang it. <laughs> Rest in peace. No, this was not B10.01. This is B10.02. Dang it. <laughs> uh, dude says, could it, 
Could it be that large rockets like the Saturn V would bend a bit, uh, like a, a meter during ascent? I don't know. If any rocket were to bend, it wouldn't be necessarily like big, like the like the Saturn V. It would be probably a really fine rocket, like the Falcon Nine. And I'm sure they can't bend too much, mostly because if it your center of thrust would start to offset from your center of pressure, and that could just <laughs> compound a lot. So I'm sure it has to be fairly. Yeah. Um, let's fly this thing. Now I remember how to do it. <laughs> Rockets do bend, according to... I like flying planes one. But I can't imagine a full meter. That seems... Mm, yeah, so I don't know. That's That's a good question. Hey, thanks, Wagner. I don't know why you got hidden. Thank you, Wagner. All right. I don't know why this takes so long to load up that stuff. Oh, well, yeah. When they'll... I can see them compressing. I don't know about bending. Oh, we forgot to turn off the... the ailerons or the canards ailerons however you say it whatever it is okay we're gonna am I incorrect in thinking we don't have nearly enough delta V to get out to Duna um, Michael I think this video will be loaded uploaded when it's done I did get the Lunar Lander. I haven't assembled it yet. Maybe I'll do something with that with Patreon or something. You know what? We're just going to do it once around on this. That's true. We could... We might have enough fuel to stop... Oh, man. On, I don't know about on Minmus. That'd be... I mean, that'd be easier. But even that's like... What, 800, 900 to get out to, plus enough to get into orbit. We don't have enough to go anywhere. Dang it. And also thanks, Michael, and thanks, Salty Gamer, for becoming a, a new member. Um, we're going to do it once around. We're going to just practice landing. That's what we're going to do. This was all just a shakedown test. Right, guys? Right? Right, guys? Right? Right? That's what I. That's all what I meant to do. I forget. Can you unset target? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's just do that. Let's just do a once around. I don't care where we're going to land. We might actually land. This might actually be pretty darn close. Um, well, yes. The rocket bent the Atlas that depressurized under balloon tankage. Of course that. <laughs> yes, that very much bent, but that's not how a normal rocket's supposed to operate. The question was more... In regards to would a normal rocket bend on ascent, not while sitting on the pad and it's depressurized and it has balloon tanks. <laughs> oh, that is pretty fun. All right. We're going to go ahead and get to our belly first orientation. Okay, and we're going to deploy our things like this. And then just kind of wing it. Oh, I forgot. Now that I... Dang it. Now that I have these thrusters up here, I could kill them, I guess. Kill the thrusters. Kill the thrusters. Whoosh. Otherwise, every time I do my, my key bindings for the wings are actually on those. Okay. Okay. So now we won't have to worry about that. Now it can operate separately. Um, ooh, yeah, KSP multiplayer with patrons would be super fun. That's true. If rockets didn't bend at all, they would break. There obviously has to be a little bit of, you know, they can't be purely rigid. Although, I mean... 
when you're talking about like tiny bits, but a meter is a lot of bending. A meter would be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much they can bend. I don't have that answer. Okay, so we're going to practice our re-entry, make sure this thing is capable of re-entering and landing. It's all just a shakedown test. All this was obviously intentional. <laughs> right? Right, guys? Right? <laughs> uh, there is a reason that rockets are typically painted white, and it's because um, they that way it doesn't absorb a lot of heat from the sun and have more boil off um, of its cryogenic fuel. Typically, electrons painted black. But the funny thing is, once it's fueled up anyway, it turns white because it's so cold. <laughs> hey there, Tai New. Thank you for joining as a member. Um, Ghost Rider wants to know if I'm leaving tomorrow for the presentation. I sure am. That is correct. Let me make sure my fuel is at the very bottom. This is going to fly way differently now that I have all that stuff up top. We are definitely going to have to strip it down a little bit. Lowering our uh, apoapsis nicely. So obviously now that we're so in an orbit, remember wherever you if you slow down, uh, if you slow down, it's going to lower your point opposite of where you are, your orbit opposite of where you are. So you can see our our lowest point is lowering, and actually what's happening is it's actually lowering this point, which is. Not only lowering this, but it's also lowering this, which is our lowest point in our orbit. This is our periapsis. Um, oh, starting to kind of get a little oscillation. Let me see what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I have... Oh, wow. Oopsies. I have to bring the... Wow, that's a way different flight configuration than last time. Good thing we tested this, actually. Yikes. Maybe we should have tested this without Kerbals. It is not happy. That's normal. That means we are now suborbital. That's good. Like we weren't before. <laughs> Look at all that crazy flamage. This is very spicy. Come on, baby, hold it together, please. I'm nervous that I'm like at maximum extension of these rear air brakes and they're still not tucked away enough. That's crazy. This could be very bad. We may not recover from this one, guys. Just warning you now. Prepare for the worst. Youch. It is not happy. Although it's staying somewhat surprisingly stable. But I think once you get to like 1,700 meters per second, that's when things really get crazy. Kind of in that hypersonic regime. Trying to hold it together. Hmm. Too many beans. <laughs> very, very spicy. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And here it begins. We are getting way off of our vector. This is not planned. But it's not the worst thing I've seen. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting kind of back to a nice... You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try... Oh, I can't go beyond that. Dang it. Dang it. Well, it's not blowing up. We could say it's it's going well. It's not exploding. So there's that. 
Uh, Mitchell Bard, how's your dad doing? I remember him being in some sort of mild alert when you were filming the Starhopper launch him. M Mitchell, thank you for remembering that. Dang, that actually means a lot. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, he, I mean, he's doing fine, but they didn't figure anything out. Uh, and like I said, I think at the time my dad has a, had a heart valve replaced about six or so years ago. He had a bicuspid heart valve, so he had to have that replaced. It has an artificial heart or semi-artificial um, heart, heart valve. And they were kind of nervous that his symptoms, feverish and like stuff could have been something related to like almost an infection or something there, some kind of weird thing. He just got a more comprehensive study done at, a, at the University of Iowa, which is a really good hospital for that kind of stuff. Um, and everything looks fine there. So um, that's obviously great news. But the, they just kind of think it might have just been a regular old virus, but it, something that kind of just gave him a bad fever and made him really dizzy and disoriented and all these like weird symptoms. So um, he's doing well, though, now. I, I really appreciate you asking. That's, that's very thoughtful. Um, but yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see how this ends up. It's actually it is kind of flying, isn't it? I want to see if we can't just hold aerodynamic flight then, huh? This is not the way this is supposed to happen at all. This is very don't judge this. This is not at all how this is supposed to happen. We added a lot more hardware to this thing. I even think we'd probably get away with one a single um, drill and stuff like that. Like it kind of maybe went overboard on the, on the ISRU. <laughs> Have I tried SCE to AUX? Yeah, we're just doing Earth to Earth travel. We went the long way around, though. I'd really like if this thing was able to pitch up soon. It's, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try flipping it like this. Watch this. Oh wait, that's back. Wait. There we go. Put some unnecessary. I just want this thing to start falling. So I'm just going to start trying to get it out of the sky. We don't have much time to get to that tail down orientation. That definitely concerns me. Come on, baby. Maybe we need to start bleeding off more fuel. Come on, buddy. Sometimes you just gotta turn off SAS and just fly the dumb thing. You know what? Screw those screw those upper flaps. I don't think they're doing us the service any any help right now, actually. Here we go. They still want to do stuff, so we're going to do this. Why is it saying that? So we're having a problem where the landing gear are not wanting to unlock. Poop. Okay, okay, I mean not the hardest landing. Are you kidding me? Oh no. We killed the Kerbals again. This is bad. This is a bad testing campaign so far. No, I don't think the crew did survive. 
Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, the module broke off the top and it went goodbye. Yeah, whoever, hey, who just joined and I crashed? I'm gonna go ahead and call this your fault. Toggling a lock. I do have a different action group for the, the extension and the action group for the locking of the piston, so I don't know what's going on there. All right, let me try something here quick. We gotta, what did, we need to fix a few things. Well, we need to fix the landing gear to work. We need to strip down the upper stage because it's actually not nearly enough Delta V. <laughs> Alright, let's load this thing up. Let's see if we can't figure out why the landing gear are doing that. All of them seem to be doing the exact same thing. So, so gear, toggle piston, toggle piston, and then under abort, we have that lockout, but oh, maybe I only toggled. Maybe I just accidentally have them locked to begin with. Locked? No. Well, that's strange. That's very strange. You guys have any recommendations there? Um, <laughs> I'll read that in a second. Let's see. Locked, no, yes. Oh! Oh, that would be why. I accidentally had them uh, when they were, when I hit SAS, they were locking the abort. That would definitely do it. Okay, there's one problem solved. Problem solved. Next problem solved. Let's increase our total delta V. We are, we're too porky. Gotta lose some weight. Gotta cut the weight. We're gonna do this, move these over, make room for just one drill. Okay, 2057, we got a ways to go here, my friends. We've got a long ways to go. We have to get like, I don't know. Okay, let's definitely remove all these crew cabins that are unnecessary. That freed up 100 meters per second. That's nice. We will say that that's necessary, though. I'm going to remove a single battery. Go down to a single one of these. Maybe we're just a little too... Although this stuff is so, so minuscule. And it really does not matter. 2,161. I want the cupola sticking up the top still. That looks nice. Guys, I'm going to... I have to go to the bathroom and refill water. I'm going to put you guys on a little tiny break. And I haven't tried this before in this new one. Let's see if it works. It's been a while since I've actually had a legit live stream that needed a break. Uh, give me just a couple seconds. I'll be right back. Rocket science. A term we all use to describe something incredibly difficult. And rightfully so. I mean, just look at a rocket engine. Stare at it too long and your brain might melt. 
Trying to grasp all the concepts involved in rocket science can be incredibly intimidating. And yet, rockets were designed and virtually perfected in an era when computers were the size of a room, and most calculations were done with paper, pencil, and a slide rule. Touchdown confirmed. The sheer brilliance of the people who have figured all the stuff out blows my mind. I, on the other hand, am a prolific college dropout. My name is Tim Dodd, but I became known as the everyday astronaut when I randomly bought a Russian spacesuit as a joke, took pictures of myself with it in just about every imaginable situation all around the world in a viral photo series. And in the making of that series, I fell head over heels in love with spaceflight and space exploration. When I started the photo series in 2014, I could barely tell you the difference between a space shuttle and a Saturn V, but my appreciation and curiosity for the subject grew into an obsession. Before you knew it, all I wanted to do was learn more and more. And the more I learned, the more I wanted to share what was making me so excited. But as someone who dropped out of college and has no technical background or degree, I really felt unqualified for the job of explaining rocket science to anyone. But the fact of the matter is, if I can learn this stuff, Anyone can. So now, through endless curiosity, an absurd amount of questions, and very little sleep, I obsessively strive to actually grasp all the complexities of rocket science. Yeah, baby! But this isn't just some basic surface level information we deal with here. Nope, we dive in deep and get into all the nitty gritty details that engineers spend years going over. I'll take you behind the scenes of the most exciting missions. Not a bad sight. Get up close and personal with the coolest hardware. Talk to the smartest people I can find. Sounds like that might have been a little loud. That's what happens when, <laughs> when I try something new. Sorry, guys. Uh, so first off, Mitchell, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not the best pilot. Actually, yes, I am. What am I talking about? I'm a great pilot. Oh, we were launching this thing, missing an awful lot of its fuel. That'll do it. That'll do it a lot. But also, I'm also thinking we don't want to raise these a little bit more since our center of, we do have a lot more mass up here that these need to counter. Okay. So we have a low thrust to weight ratio at first. And I think it's time to put this baby back up on the stack. I'm nervous that now our thrust to weight ratio to begin with is gonna to be too low. Oh, just barely, she's gonna crawl off the pad. Okay, but that helps a lot. That's way more Delta V. Do you guys think that's anywhere near enough? I'm hoping it is. It does mean less altitude from super heavy. You're right. Um, I could go with a smaller ISRU, but that's not a that's not actually a ton of mass in the in the grand scheme of things. I guess it is pretty substantial, isn't it? Um, it is a ton lighter. Um, you know what I might do. No, I think we'll be fine. Last time we actually had plenty um, in the in the super heavy. We, like we, I totally overshot it. I had trust of the legs like a crush core absorbs that. I've seen a couple people say that. A little trust. Is this considered a trust? Like these things? I would do that. I'm also kind of lazy though. Okay. Um, what is it again? Duna is, um, two, how much? 1500. I don't know how to read that. For some reason I'm freaking out cause it's like two, it's not enough. <laughs> 1500 down to the surface or off of the surface. Um, and Miles, also, hang on. Hi, Tim. Loved your recent video. I'm super excited uh, for the arrow spike. Trust me, I am too. <laughs> Wonder uh, what will happen first. Uh, that or the Midwest meetup. Keep up the awesome work. 
Good question, Miles. Uh, the Aerospec video will be probably be done before the Midwest meetup. I'm trying to do that in conjunction with my friends, uh, uh, Ryan Chlinsky and Mary Liz Bender, uh, who do a, a project called um, Cosmic Perspective. And they have this really cool thing that they do a live presentation. So I was going to do it with them at the same time, and it's going to be awesome. Okay. I think we've got... Yeah, the Aerospike video, guys, is going to be better than the Raptor video. I'm going to tell you that right now. So if you enjoy the Raptor video, you will enjoy this more. That's I, I feel like that's that's my new bar is the Raptor video. I'm not going to make all my videos that intense, but um, this video is going to be better. And I'm really, really excited about that because it's a really deep dive on a, on a topic that I thought I actually knew quite a I thought I knew a decent amount about it. But then, like, once I actually got to learning, I'm like, holy cow, I don't know anything about this stuff. And that's that's great to me. That's that's awesome. That means I'm doing it. OK, I think um, I think we're good to go. Um, Scott, we'll probably do another our, our, our Ludicrous Live next year for each anniversary, but um, I don't know. I, I I mean, maybe if it works out, we're kind of all around the same place at the same time. We'll try to do another one live. It was fun. Okay, should we just give it a go? What are those? What are these weird things sticking out here? Don't know, don't care. All right, let's let's give this a go. Hopefully not too much time has passed. I'm sure we're still well within our window. We could try to lighten this up a little more. Like, yeah, maybe removing the ISRU and going with a smaller one. But it'll be good enough. At least we'll have enough to be able to get to, like, I don't know, the moon or something. <laughs> what will happen first? The first three Artemis NASA missions are aerospace. Come on! Come on! I know you're teasing me. Yes, time stops and you're in the VAB, but don't forget we did, I guess we just did a single lap around Kerbin. So I guess, what, we wasted an hour out of, like, days. Yeah, we, um, Paul, Paul says the sound for live, our Ludicrous Future is awful. Yeah, that's the problem with those live shows like that is, they always sound bad. I, one of my favorite podcasts, um, called Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, they end up, doing live shows and those are always the ones where I'm like, oh man. <laughs> Maybe we should record locally, each of us, like a, a lav. <laughs> Bang ding ow. Some ting wong. Bang ding ow. Come on, come on computer. Man, this takes way too long. Okay, we are ready now though. We are very ready. Oh, we only have, except for that we only have a single Kerbin. Kerbin? Since we only have one, <laughs> should we do it anyway? There's a lone, lone Kerbin. What should we do? Um, what should we do, guys? Should we launch this one, or should we go back in the stupid thing and reload it and do all that stuff? It doesn't really matter. Let's just send one. We're sending one. I don't care. Uh, three, two, one, hip, hip. <laughs> I hit space bar on three that time. Yeah, one man, one Kerbin. Thomp Bart, th Thomp Bart, Thomp Bart, you, congratulations, you are now going to be the first Kerbin to do this. Everyone has so little faith that I'm going to pull this off. I don't. Third time's a charm. Yeah, it's a little throw, low thrust weight ratio, but you know what? We're getting there. I think it was only like, what was it, 1.06 or something. Okay, now again, don't forget we are going to do a very late gravity turn. It also helps our booster. We should have a decent amount of Delta V. No, Paul, I don't, we're not going to revert. I don't do reverts. I'm not reverting. Unless there's like a, a technical issue. Or if it's just like 
I'll, I'm really bummed and we just got darn close and I just did some dumb mistake. But like this early on, yeah. Um, I've seen people ask if there's coupons to my shop. Yes, patrons do get um, a coupon code for 10% off. If you work in the aerospace industry, you can click on apparel, you can get 25% off. There's a link that, that uh, sends, you have to send in an approved email from an approved domain. Um, and that way it validates that you work in the aerospace industry. And also we do now have the rapid unscheduled discount section with, with some shirts and prints that are, that are in there that are discounted pretty heavily, like 40 to 50% off some items in there. So if, if that's what you're looking for, um, yeah, you can do that. Okay, let's work on our gravity turn. I'm just always scared with how fragile that decoupler joint is for some reason. Just really don't want to break it. You know what? I might just turn on F uh, turn off SAS and just let this thing fly. This is when it like overcorrects that it does that bendiness. Oh god, we're very, very, very low with Oh the last time we had enough fuel we just did too much of a boost back burn actually. Delay inputs are so slow. Oh god, we gotta do a separation already. This is probably because I have more fuel in this stage, which makes it um Yeah. Okay. Let's light this baby. We definitely have to get this to be out of the atmosphere. This probably the booster's not gonna land, I'm afraid. Oh yeah, we have a really low thrust away ratio on this now too. Great. Ah, rocket science. Darn it, rocket science. Yeah, and that gravity. The gravity drag of having... We probably should have added more engines to the first stage is what we should have done. I got to get this pretty much out of the atmosphere, though, before we do anything. Otherwise, I won't be able to get back to it. Oh, maybe we just say screw it and we're just going to carry on our way and just let the booster be a booster. What do you guys think? I don't think I can recover the booster. That'll be for another time when we revise it a little bit. Straighten out here, we're flying a little crooked. Off of our 90 degree heading. All right, that's better. Boy, oh boy, we got a long ways to go though. What's our, what's the uh, specific impulse of these? 315, that's right, they changed it. It used to be like 340. It was probably too high. Maybe we should do MVAC engines, or vacuum engines. I just keep changing my mind, don't I? Let's just get this thing into orbit. We'll probably have, what, 3,000 meters per second? <laughs> I should have stuck some of those big old vacuum engines in there. Those are awesome. Those have, like, three, 350 or 360. They keep changing that again, too, though. Oh, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to dog leg it. Oh, this is inefficient, too. Almost for sinking. This is kind of how a centaur flies, by the way. Low thrust to weight ratio. It actually sometimes has to pitch up to not go back into the atmosphere. Come on, baby. 
Okay, guys, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a um, little encouragement here. Our, can 2,000 meters per second get us to Duna and propulsively land? It won't take much Delta V to propulsively land, but can 2,000 meters per second get us to, to, to Duna? Someone get out your Kerbal calculators right now. Tell me. From very low Kerbin orbit, by the way. Eek this thing into orbit very gently. Okay, we're in orbit now. It'll be close. 1300 to get there. That's perfect. And we have, we can refuel on Mars. Let's do this. Set target. Let's do our burn like here-ish. See how we do. Don't hit the moon. Come on. Oh, they have that new thing, but I've never done it before down there, don't they? Let's see if it changes our orbit at all if we do something like this. Does this get us closer or further? Looks like the answer is closer. Hey -o. It's only gonna take a thousand meters per second. This is great. Is this why I'm supposed to use that new interface? That I don't know how to use. 110,000. Is it a an inclination problem? Maybe. There we go. Let's get nice and close. Okay, we're gonna, we can do a mid-course correction, of course, and get us a lot closer. For now, that's, we can, we can deal with that, especially because we have, okay. Yeah, we're gonna arrow break straight to landing on Duna, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're gonna skim the freaking surface of Duna. Coming super spicy. Okay, I'm gonna quick save here just for safety. In case I fly past it. <laughs> which I tend to do when I get impatient. So at 30 seconds on our maneuver node, we're gonna go ahead and do our burn. And here we go. Three, two, one, hip hip. How do I get out of this thing? Weird. I don't mind this, but I don't want it just all there. I kind of... There we go. Huh. I've never seen that. I've never done it before. Interesting. Yeah, I've never never dealt with that, if you can't tell. <laughs> okay, settle down. Why is it Settle your butt? You guys need to you need to time out. Your gimbal is 
killing me. Okay. Probably a nominal-ish insertion. Looks like we do have a Duna encounter. Not bad. I think we can improve upon that with some simple RCS control right now. Look at that. We can really bleed it off. 21. From way back here. That's cool. 18. We have a thousand meters per second. This is no problem. Fifteen. I'm just kind of playing around with uh, I K, L J M or whatever, and working on closing up our. If it gets closer, you hold it. If it gets further away, you don't. Like I said, we can definitely do some mid-course corrections, too, and, and bring this down even more. That seems to be pretty great. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Eight million. Seven. Oops. Kind of looks like 7.5 is about all the closer we can get right now, easily. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good enough. Like I said, we'll do a mid-course correction here. I better get our solar panels out. Turn on some lights. Get cozy. Hey, thanks, Paul. Thanks for hanging out. Once we get out of Kerbal orbit, now we'll probably go go a little ways here, and we will do... We'll go ahead and focus on Duna. Which is basically Mars. And we'll take a look at our actual burn. So it looks like we need to go north. And north is relative. Let's see if this helps. Look at that. We're going to just nail this from way out here. Small correction burns. Look at that. Matching the inclination pretty much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on fine control now because now we're like actually getting <laughs> getting in here. I mean, look at this. We can basically make it so we just skim the atmosphere. Hang on. I'm just trying to straighten out our inclination. Whoa. That's great. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Let us do it. Do or do not it. We're going to do not it. I'm done. I forget how to, how to zip back to your ship easily. There we go. Okay, let's fast forward. Time warp, let's get to Mars. Yeah, this would be nice. This would be very nice. And we have a thousand meters per second should be plenty to land on Duna, because it doesn't even take nearly as much Delta V to actually land. 
Um, although it doesn't have, yeah, we'll see. Is my internet crap in the bed? Yes, it is. One second here, guys. Sorry. There, is that better? What is going on? Sorry, guys. I had to just switch to my cell phone. That's the problem with coax. That still sucks. It's doing that thing where it's intermittent. I'm going to try one more thing quick. Give me a second, guys. That should be better. That looks rock solid now. Gosh. Uh, sorry, guys. I have no idea what causes that. I've done so many things to try to, to try to get this better, but hopefully that's better. Um, yeah. Let's let's go. Let's get back. Let's get back there. I I, I didn't let the game go, uh, so you didn't miss anything. Ah, oh, it's doing it again. What in the heck? Let me just double check here. Still pretty crappy though, isn't it? course I got a brand new phone so that's probably not gonna help Sometimes you have to like have to unplug everything in your life and plug everything back in. <laughs> because that's basically what I just did. Uh, and the worst thing is I just got a new phone today and for some reason my computer hated the phone's hotspot because it was like, oh, this is new. Something's a little bit different. Like it's, your phone's now a little bit green. I don't know how to connect to its hot, I can't do its hotspot. I can't get its hotspot going. Oh. And uh, that's what happened. And it's still doing this. I'm going to punch Mediacom is what's going to happen. I have a solution, but it's down, way down in the garage. Hmm. This is what happens when you move to a city where they don't have... Same internet that you're used to. I don't know what to do, guys. I don't know what to do. 
I've restarted everything. So at this point, I might just be SOL. Wow. I think it was an OBS problem. Really? That was the last thing I restarted, and now it's great. Hopi, I, I know I lost literally everyone just now. That shocks me. I did not think OBS would ever... You did me dirty, OBS. You did me dirty, OBS. Let me know if you guys are here. There we go. There we go. Yep, that was that was an OBS problem. That is super weird. Thank you for sticking around. I I, I can't tell you how like frustrating that is. But I'm just trying to, I'm trying to have a good and relaxing night off, basically. Just, I've worked way too hard lately. Then to have just something crash like this and not have a solution in sight and just watch everyone cry and me too cry. It just sucks. It just sucks. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you for sticking around. Although it seems to be right back at it. Dropping frames again. Hang on. Let me see if there's, hang on. Let me see if there's something running that's fighting OBS right now. Uh, that should not be happening. Give me a second. I'll see if I can't get this better still because I know it's not the best. Keep troubleshooting. Keep troubleshooting, Tim. You can do this. Come on. You went to something school for exactly this reason <laughs> I didn't really go to school uh, I don't know it's it's dropped frames in OBS and I've never really had this happen before I wonder what changed The drop frame count is just going through the roof on OBS. There, maybe that helped. I had a memory leak the other day. I should have probably just restarted my computer. There we go. That seems to be much better. But I keep saying that and then it just goes. Argh. So, I don't know. Let's try it. With the music. With the music this time. With a little more feeling this time. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, quick saving because I don't know what's happened here. Uh, Alex, thank you for your support. I really like your channel. Love Space and KSP. Thank you for everything I've learned on this channel. Well, thank you, Alex. That <laughs> makes me feel better right now. Right now, my like, self-esteem is at the bottom of the basement. So just knowing you guys are here, uh, that means a lot. So thank you. Um, Seth, I don't know anything about Streamlabs OBS. What's the difference between Streamlabs OBS and OBS? I would love a more reliable version of OBS. I will admit that. I might have had like a memory leak or something because now I feel like the game like play is gonna be even better. Okay, still charting 8,000 meters. And there it goes again. <laughs> right when I thought it was gone. <laughs> right when I thought it was gone. Guys, this might just have to be, this might just have to be the end of it for me tonight. I don't know what to do. If it's going to be shysty like this, I just, I, stress wise, I can't handle it. <laughs> hmm.
Is it is it really bad? Yes. It appears it's really bad. I will bump this down. So at least we don't just totally bump into it. <laughs> Jayden, I literally did basically turn it on and off again. Like, that's literally what I've done. Oh. There we go. I'm just watching it for a second because I don't want to, I don't want to bring you guys along if it's just going to be garbage. Uh, I did reboot the router. Router's been rebooted. It's something with OBS because OBS will drop frames, which it normally does not do. Okay, we're trying it. Someone mentioned maybe it's time warping. That'd be really bad if time warping somehow borked my computer. Seems to be better now, though. Okay. Thank you guys for sticking around. Let's do this. Let's focus on this. The last option would be I have to reboot the whole computer. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to quick save right here. Kind of our last chance to, to get in there. Let's do this. Let's just get in there. Let's land this bird. Right away, we need to retract our stuff. Go to, go against. We still have these doing stuff for some reason. Low flying planes, I appreciate your concern. But we'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> Jalen, will SpaceX beat SLS to the moon? Cargo versus humans. Um, you know, um, I honestly, I could see, oh, I need to pay a little bit of attention here. Um, I could actually see Starship beating SLS to the moon, but... I don't think humans first. I think it could probably potentially beat it uncrewed. Um, but landing on the moon, I think, will be a pretty substantial thing for SLS. Because I, I think there's going to be a lot of studies that need to be done to make sure you can land a vehicle of that size on the moon without just permanently putting up a cloud of debris uh, <laughs> in orbit around the moon or, or nearly orbit. Um, there's going to be some studies done. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm curious, oh, sorry, I'm kind of concentrating here. This is, this is actually working, so that's good. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think SLS right now, just because it's so, SLS and Orion and Artemis, um, the Artemis program is, I mean, it's been around for quite a while. It's actually very mature hardware, you know, and it's legitimately like ready for human operations, right? Like it's built from the ground up from, for human operations. And, um, of course, you know, Starship is, is going to be intended to do that. But look at how hard it's been for them to, to get Dragon Capsule going, too, which is pretty simple compared to <laughs> having a whole crew module up there with a, a ton of people. Um, I'm not saying it can't be done, obviously, but it, it will be difficult. I know we're all excited for it. Um, but SLS and, and the legacy systems like that, that is, that is substantially easier. Um, yeah, good question though. Um, Max, uh, Alex, I'd love to support someone as into space as me. Well, thank you, Alex. We got to stick together. Okay. I got to actually pay attention here. Sorry. Um, thank you for your tips, everybody. I'm going to work on that flip maneuver.
There we go. We actually can get the legs down this time. Boy, we almost have too much thrust to weight ratio. Oh yeah, I turned the gimbals way down. I was like, what is going on? There we go. Gonna need this to bleed off some of that horizontal velocity. No problem now. Here we go. Nice and soft. We have all the Delta V, not all the Delta V in the world, but we have a lot of Delta V. So we might as well just really milk this. Really milk this, baby. Yes, I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Houston, we have landed. We have landed on the surface of Duna. Yes. And none of the action groups are working. What is going on? What the heck? Did these break off or something? <laughs> what is going on though? Why can't I retract these? Did these break? I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused about why these aren't working. Um, what about this? That isn't either. Don't tell me it like detached or something dumb. Well, we were planning to get home because we have a refueler on board. Don't tell me it's like... What broke? <laughs> what piece of this puzzle broke? Why can't I... None of this stuff is working. Like, I, I don't have the option of controlling anything. Hang on. Is this just a glitch or something? F3, see if something broke. Nice and clean. I have no idea. Map, reload. There we go. There we go. <sighs> okay, let's extend the ladder. That made me nervous. Okay. All right. There we go. And look, the... The Starship's only sliding a little. <laughs> Why does that happen? We even have the sticky pads on there. Come on, grip pads. I forget, can you actually fly around on... No. <laughs> All right. Let's, um... Let's let him hang out. Or her. Who is this? Thom Thombart? Sure. And let's go ahead and get the... I think if we get the drill down, it might actually stick it a little bit better. Can we change the friction on these by any chance? Okay, and let's see if we can actually start refueling Starship. Let's 
Why, yes. Yes, we can. <laughs> I like that our Kerbal's just going to sit out there for weeks, just hanging out, watching it refuel. We told him to, you know, back up a little bit just in case it blows up. <laughs> it's going to take a while. But look at how much Delta V we're gaining already. Yeah, just a quick, no inflatable habitats. There, there's actually a lot of habitable space up there that I could let <laughs> our poor Kerbal get into. <laughs> YouTube hates the compression setting. I'll try bumping up the output a little bit now, now that we seem to not be totally hated by the computer right now. <laughs> a little Lego mode's fun. Is that better? I can go up another notch. <laughs> Stunning six pixels. Alright, let me try doubling it all together. Well, look at that. It's taking forever to fuel up, but we're getting a lot of Delta V back. Is it potato 2.0 at least? Are we up to, are we, are we to like baked potato or are we still just down in potato quality? Cause I'm trying to just like up the game a little bit. Like I wouldn't eat a potato on its own, but I'd eat a potato, a baked potato, or maybe like a nice potato al gratin or something. Much better, good, good. Thank you, good. That's what we like to hear around here. I'm just gonna still let the Kerbal hang out. They're happy, they're happy as a clam or as a Kerbal. Um, what do I, how could I speed this up? I really can't. What do we need to get home? We need, I think it's 1600 to get out of Duna orbit. Another like thousand to get home and then another thousand to land. So we probably need like 4,000 meters per second of Delta V. Um, let's see. Uh, Maxers, thank you for hanging out. Dennis, if you can get a second computer for OBS, Look into OBS NDI streaming and lower bitrate to 5,000, 6,000. Brother is a full-time streamer. Good luck. I I do need to probably figure something out. Um, <laughs> I like how you say lower bitrate to 5,000. I had it down to 2,000 there for a little bit. My normal's 4,500. That's what people have told me is good. Um, let's see here. <laughs> um. Yeah, I should I should figure out something better. I, I'm actually working on a studio space now. Finally, uh, that will be a little more reliable. I, I won't have to go through coaxial cable. That's I think part of the big problem. And also, I'll have an updated computer system. Maybe I should just get a, a gaming PC, just like the most powerful gaming PC I could build for Kerbal or something. That'd be pretty fun. Um, Rock the Rocket says, "Is it me or is interplanetary travel just eating things out of planet?" It really is, honestly. It's pretty much all it is. Yep. It's just pointing it in the exact perfect direction to be able to intercept where that other thing is going to be at the exact time that the object you yeeted gets there. That's pretty much exactly right. Uh, Nukeman, just signed up for your Patreon. Thanks for showing me space. I'm currently going into college to get a computer science degree to work for SpaceX. Dude, that's awesome, Nukeman. Uh, best of luck. Seriously, that's. I'm so glad that we have a generation that's actually inspired to do something like. That's, that's the coolest thing to me in the world right now is that we have people, we have young people, um, <laughs> people are complaining that he's been there for a year and a half. I don't care. He's having fun. He really likes it right there. It's his favorite place on Duna. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, why would I go to college? Well, guess what? Now you have a purpose for going to college. If you go to college and you work your butt off, you're going to be literally sending humans to Mars. Like that's the reality of it. Like maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it's kind of like, why would I go to college? Well, you can get a nice accounting degree. Not, nothing against accountants, because I need an accountant. Uh, you can get a nice accounting degree, and maybe if you do well, uh, you might be able to, you know, blah, 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 at, a, at a, this factory or something, you know? And now it's like, it, but it was really uncertain. All of a sudden, people were like, I don't know if that's worth it. You know, college is $100,000 or whatever it is, in the U.S. especially. Um, and it, it's, it was a hard sell, but all of a sudden, now we have a generation of people that are like, wait a minute, if I work really hard, I can actually send human beings to other planets 
like that's the reality of the fact that's not some <laughs> that if that doesn't motivate you i don't know what will because that motivates me that's like the whole reason i'm doing this is just because it, that is the reality we live in we're living in that era and it's it's insane it's so so cool so absolute best of luck nuke man um we're all wishing you luck we rely on you uh you and your other colleagues your other what do you call that co-eds your other collegiate friends and people working on degrees we rely on you guys to get us um get us off this planet please please get us out of earth orbit for the first time in 50 years please 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 so yeah super cool all right let's see how we're doing right 35 i'm gonna try and i'm basically gonna top her off i feel like i'll never be like oh darn it uh, i had too much fuel actually i could on re-entry that could almost be a bad thing but Degree is no guarantee, but you know what? It's a lot better off. You're definitely not going to be working uh, as a programmer at SpaceX, for instance, if you don't have a degree. Um, Alex Donlin, uh, or Dolan, have you ever gone on the Vomit Comet? I have not. I had an, an opportunity. I still might have to follow someone up on that. But... Um, yeah, I, I want. I would like to. I think I'd have a lot of fun. And someone else, I think, I'll ask, ask one more time about uh, riding with the Thunderbirds. Thank you for reminding me. I think I had to fill out. I had to get a um, a physical and a few things. But that's still totally on the table. I just had to go through some paperwork, and that's probably my goal for this winter is to ride with the Thunderbirds, and that will be awesome. <laughs> that was the craziest invite I've ever had on Twitter. All right, 4,000. We're getting there. Let's get a little change of scenery. Do I think the U.S. will actually get to the moon by 2024 or later? I definitely think we're on track to actually getting back to the moon. Like, this is the first time we've had multiple options on the table. Legitimate. I mean, for better or for worse, uh, NASA signed another, what was it, $3.9 billion to buy basically six more Orion capsules. And I don't, you know... I I personally don't think that's the best spend of money. Um, but I don't care at this point. Like, thank you. Because we finally actually are buying hardware to get humans back to the moon. And say what you will about efficiency. Say what you will about thinking, you know, Starship could do it for, you know, one-tenth that cost. You're, you're probably right. But at the same time, like, there's already been, it is sunk cost fallacy. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that we're finally seeing a legitimate investment in getting to the moon yes we're, the, now is not the time to poo poo it because i i guess i w the big thing is i wish this had happened like six or seven years ago um like we the if the orion and sls program was where it is today six or seven years ago i think it would have been even way more justifiable and way more like yes this is a great step and then that would have ushered in the commercial thing we're just at this weird convergent point where commercial and and the kind of more traditional method of doing things and cost plus contracting and things where they're kind of just at this weird point, that's this convergent point. And I think it's just kind of a shame. It's just like unfortunate. Um, but yeah, that that's my thoughts. Okay, did we do it? We're pretty much topped off. Um, Jacob, also, also computer science student. Oh, sweet. Keep up the good work. A lot, of, a lot of things to do in the future for sure. You're absolutely right. There's plenty to do in the future thank you alex dolan is there any time fans can meet you because i'd love to alex i do meetups almost every time i'm like on the road um patreon members always get um first dibs on meetups and, and especially if it's a like a big event oh god don't tell me the landing gear is not gonna be happy now with all this extra weight okay buddy time to get back in that ship run run it is tipping over this is the martian all over again <laughs> I did not do run very well. Um, but yeah, I always do meetups. Um, patrons normally get like, you know, if I'm doing a meetup somewhere, they'll get to hang out and do dinner a little more one-on-one -on -one or, you know, go somewhere a little quieter. And then meetups, we tend to just find a big enough space. Um, almost every time I'm out in like LA or a big city, um, I do meetups. I'm doing, I'll probably try to do one or two meetups in Europe in, at the end of October. Um, for sure, I will for sure do one in Sweden and perhaps one in... Um, if I can manage it in like Vienna, maybe. I probably shouldn't have done that. Probably didn't need to mess with anything. 
This is literally like the Martian almost, guys. This is kind of ironically funny. What I might do is I might just go park this in orbit just so we don't have to worry about it. And I want to get done with this. I got to I gotta get some dinner in me. Did we quick save? Yeah, we did. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the thrusters are mad at us. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, let's get out of here and then we'll, we'll resituate our orbit. Goodbye, Mars. It was fun hanging out on you for like a year, or 10 years, or five years, or whatever it was. <laughs> okay. Ending you in. Good thing our thrust to weight ratio is high enough on the surface of Mars. <laughs> If this is taking off from Earth with only three Raptors, it wouldn't have worked fully fueled. That's actually how the real the real Starship Mark One and Mark Two, if they fully fueled them right now, they wouldn't be able to take off with those three Raptor engines. Okay, here we go. We can probably start our gravity turn fairly soon since Mars's atmosphere is so much thinner. Well, that's weird. What is go? Guys, it changed its key binding somehow. To an old configuration. This is weird. What is... No, this is going to make landing on... On Kerbin super hard. Normally... What is happening? This is getting super glitchy, guys, because... I can't actually control... Anything? Look at... Oh no, oh no. Oh! I was in docking mode or something? Weird. Okay, good to know. <laughs> no wonder. Okay, we're back at it. Sorry for the panic. Tucking these babies in now. <laughs> it's because I didn't say hip hip. Ye of little faith. <laughs> Alex, am I free May 16th, 2020? You have a big event and you'd love to see me. I don't know. I don't do like... I don't really do like... Where I come to someone's house or something. <laughs> I'm not like a... One of those like for hire entertainers. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds weird to me. Maybe if your event is totally like a space conference or something yeah hit me up but if it's just like hey i'm my school's doing a play shakespeare and i'm the lead role and i would like you to come visit sorry i, I probably won't be able to make that happen <laughs> that's a privilege reserved to family and friends um okay we're gonna coast out to our apoapsis Here we go. We are in a good orbit, ladies and gentlemen. We are officially in orbit around Mars. A good step for our, our progress home. Okay. Tracking station. Um, let's see. Sounds like Elon may have replied to me on Twitter. Let's see what that's about. Raptor uses milled copper channels with ink and old jacket all the way down. That's amazing. How do they do that? So there we go. The Raptor uses uh, milled copper channels with an ink and old jacket all the way down. Now we know. Which is amazing because look at how thin the nozzles are. Yet there's, in those nozzles, in that thin wall, you can flow, fuel literally goes down to the end of it and turns around and comes back. Like, that's amazing. 
That's, that just blows my mind. <laughs> that's so cool. And that's how they keep the nozzles from melting. Um, There we go. Let's see if we get that figured out. Okay, and tracking station. Well, thank you, Chase, by the way. Um, I, I'm glad that you guys appreciate the hard work. I think I have worked probably too hard. Um, probably too hard this year. <laughs> it's kind of taken its toll, I think, on my personal life, but I'm getting better at um, at, at trying to organize all that and everything. So thank you. Thank you for noticing. Thank you for caring. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for paying attention. Like that means a lot. It's super weird to me still that there's that many people that actually subscribe and hang out. And yeah, it's weird. It's actually a really strange thing. Uh, but you guys are great. And the support means uh, the world to me. So if it wasn't for your support, I, I, I get lost in, in the negativity all the time, and it's a really hard thing to, to not avoid. Like, it just happens as a creator. Every creator talks about, like, you can have a thousand positive com comments, but the one that you happen to read, you know, you might check and read, and it's like, this guy sounds like a dumb idiot with a greasy face. Like, it's just like, that's the one you read, and that's what sticks with you, because you're just like, really? I spent weeks on this video, and all you care about is you know, mispronunciation of a word or something. So just a friendly reminder to all of you, if for proper internet communicate, the like proper internet, um, if you, okay, so if, hang on, how do I do this now? If I go like this and then go, I wanna go to Earth or Kerbin. Um, I probably need my frame of reference from here. Use Duna as reference. Um, friendly reminder though, um, Time to transfer another 178 days. Pour that curve in. Um, if you make comments, just just pause for one second. Um, you know, you'll be surprised just how much a little, like a little, what could come off as a negativ negativity, can really impact someone. Like a lot, a lot. So just remember, like when you're making comments, it really does matter. I know that sounds very like juvenile. It sounds very uh, words, words never hurt, or sticks and stones, well, whatever. But like you don't realize that people read those comments and it really the the like the little sneer or like you might be totally teasing like you miss you mispronounce something funny like the one might be fine but all of a sudden if someone starts reading that 40 times you know if that's the number one comment on a video that you worked really hard on is that you mispronounced a word it just kind of stings it it really does hurt and that stuff takes its toll and i know it sounds so dumb i know it does but when there's hundreds and hundreds of those every day, it's hard. It really, it, ah, I know it sounds so dumb. It sounds so juvenile and it sounds so silly, but it's, that's why if you, if you've seen creators get burnt out, you see people say like, I couldn't take it. Like the mental health issues, the personal well being. it's because of that. It's because of trolls. I know. And like, not even trolling, but just like, just negativity. It, all it takes, here's the thing. Like, instead of saying like, I love the video, but something 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 just like double check make sure someone else hasn't said that and it's not like the top comment i think that's the worst part is like when people are like did someone notice that someone and like that's the thing you see every single time it's, it's just this weird thing and i know sorry to go on a rant about this but we were talking about a, we talk about it all the time in the podcast that i'm a part of because all three of us run youtube channels and all three of us have different ways of dealing with that stuff but what i would love youtube if you're watching mr youtube or mrs youtube or miss if there was a way to make it so people that commented on videos that you could turn it on, so people that comment have to have a verified identification so that they can't be an anonymous person, I think that'd make a big difference. And if like people had a way of holding the people accountable for what they're talking about, I think that'd make a big, a big, big, big difference on the internet because people hide behind, you know, usernames and things that, that don't matter. And they can say things that they would never say to someone's face is really just the reality of it. Let's see if we can't get this thing back home. I'm hungry. 
A space-themed bar mitzvah. I... I don't know, man. That's interesting. I, I don't know... I don't know how to go to a space theme bar mitzvah. I don't even, I don't know. I mean, I I don't even really do the public speaking aspect. I actually took that section down on my website because it's just something that I honestly am not as passionate about now. I'm, I'm finding that it's not worth the time to go. Like the impact I can have if I, if I stay around um, here and work hard and focus on content is a lot greater than going in, and talking to like a high school um, somewhere on the other side of the country. So... I'm not going to say no to your bar mitzvah, but um, it's just, it's really hard to make time for that stuff. I'm, I'm struggling right now to make time for just the things that I need to do, like with my, th the prior commitments and stuff. Ah, stupid moon. How do I do this? There's a way to like add an orbit. There we go. Ayo. Oh, ayo. There we go. There it is. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, this is going to be easy. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll fine-tune that later. We got to do some, uh, some orbits. Because I think that was, like, on the next orbit. Is that how that works? I've actually, like, never used the next orbit thing. Yeah, it is. Okay. There's one. There's two. And here comes three. Oh, I really want to hit it on the notes of the music. Dang it. I missed it. I missed it. No. Dang it. That would have been a cool time to, to do our trans-earthian burn. Trans-earthian burn? Urshan? It's only 800 meters per second back home. That's easy. We got this. 22 seconds-ish. Here we go. 3, 2, 1, hip it. I don't care. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What exactly are you doing? No, no, no. What is going on? Oh, is that anti... What? So confused. Gonna have to manually fly this. Manly. Not manly. Manually fly this, baby. Um... Okay. Let's go ahead and try and get our perfect thing here first. Would you look at this? No, I just <laughs> get back here. Hang on, guys. Sorry, I'm just wrestling a noodle right now, basically. Fine adjustments.
Come on. Come on. Five, forty-five, thirty-five. There we go. That should be plenty. <laughs> okay. Um, let me let me get into the time warp here, and then I will start reading you guys' comments because we got a little ways to go. Let's do a quick save here. Pew. Okay. Um, uh, PJ says, uh, PJ Bonner says, I am studying mechanical and aerospace engineering at UK, Australia. Sweet. I gotta say that you helped me inspire to go down to the, to the hypersonics path. Dude, that's awesome. That is so cool. Thank you so much for telling me. Best of luck. Everyone wish uh, PJ some the best of luck studying mechanical and aerospace engineering. That's awesome. Again, we need you. We need the next generation of people to really, really, really uh, up our game. Like, let's let's get off this freaking planet. And best of luck. Thank you for saying hi. Alex, it's fine if you can't come. Well, uh, again, I, I don't know how to commit to something in May at this point. Just I, I panic about committing to something next week in case I, like, miss a launch or something. It's uh, hard. But we can talk later. Thank you very much, though. Uh, Jeffrey... Uh, will we keep this video live? I've missed most of it. Yes, I think I will just go ahead and post this live, even though it's going to be super, uh, like, annoyingly. It had so many glitches and stuff. Um, but I, I think we'll go ahead and do it. Um, let's see. Um, let's see, Kim, do you think any, you think of any way how we will navigate through space later? We use Earth as a reference point today, but how will we do it in the future? Jeez. That's a loaded question. Um, I don't know, honestly. That's probably like, the next point would probably be like just navigating more based on our, our own star and then maybe like the center of our galaxy. Because, yeah, later on, like, navigating, having the center or the Earth kind of be our... Well, we kind of change our reference based on what we're orbiting. So I think that's kind of always going to be the rule. And then I think that's just kind of the way you, you do it, really. You just use your frame of reference of whatever body you're orbiting. Um, I think. I mean, I better perk up here a little bit. Um, yeah, that, that's my guess. That that's, that's where my money's at, is that they'll just change it to wherever... Um, Whatever body you're orbiting. Okay, and then um, Oxymoron says, Tim, please consider the consequences of preventing online uh, anim an anonymity. Uh, cancel culture is toxic and can impede free speech. Well, here's the thing. As a creator, should I not have the ability to say that, like, you guys know who I am. You see my face. Should I not have the ability to say, like, if you're going to speak anonymously to me, I don't want that. I want to know who you are. I'm not, I don't think that should be the, the case for all of the internet. But as a creator and on my own channel, should I not have the ability to, to filter that? To say, like, it's strange that we're living in this one-sided relationship here? Like, isn't that weird? That wouldn't be anywhere else. Like, so to me, I would like that ability to be able to toggle that personally. I think that'd be nice for creators. I don't think that should be the case for other portions of the internet, but I think it should be a nice option if you want to, to be able to like not have people hiding behind a username um, so that they don't have responsibility for their for their the things they say. Yeah. I mean, that's how that's how I think. <laughs> Um, so Coffee Dog says, Tim, television and movies are one-sided. Sure. But are the actors in real time reading the comments of anonymous people? No. That's just, it's never worked like this before. There's never been a time where, where in the same chat room, there might be a PhD doctorate person sitting here giving you a thesis about something they just spent the past 12 years on, and a 13-year-old with the username FartDog22 trying to debunk why they're wrong. Like, that's not how society's supposed to work. They would never be sitting in the same debate hall with, you know, amongst esteemed colleagues that have all studied um, orbital mechanics for the past 12 years and have some fart dog 22 come and sit down at the table and have the same level of, 
influence and and communication with in in that situation that's just uh, it's it's obscene it's it's abnormal like this is not how society has ever worked in the past and that's something that i think um might have consequences beyond what we understand um no it's not you're right i mean seth i know you now man like i know a lot of you people um yeah that's that's my opinion. I just think in some like on my platform with my channel, I would like to know who's talking to me personally so that they so they at least have some weight to their consequences of the things that they're saying online. That's my, uh oh. We came in way too spicy. Boy, oh boy, did we come in too spicy. Like way too spicy. Again, awfully cheery music for what's happening here. I do want to land, so I'm going <laughs> to... Dang it. All right. Yeah, that was definitely ghost pepper level spicy. That was way too spicy. Yeah, that was that was bad. That was very bad. We will do. We'll have to do a little bit of a. We can definitely do shallower, but I'm just gonna go ahead and we have plenty of delta V. I'll just go ahead and arrow or do a retro propulsion burn and slow ourselves down before we hit the internet. <laughs> Man, why is it taking so long? Someone said something about like, well, isn't that how Twitter, you know, Twitter has these problems because now they have kind of like verified people and it lends credence. That's like, it's not a universal thing. It's not, and it's meant to like protect brand identity and things like that. I'm talking about a way that like, you at least have to have like, I would like the option if you're to comment on my videos that you have to use like your, some form of identity that makes it so you're not just like a faceless person. I'm not saying it to be like a verified something, something in that, but like anyone can apply for it. It's a simple, easy thing. And if not, like, I don't know why, why comment? I don't know. I'll think about it more. It's just the way I, I feel that would be a decent option. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of do this again, but we're gonna, do a little bit of a retro burn ahead of time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out our periapsis. We're gonna keep it around that same 18,000 maybe, or 30, maybe we'll go like 30,000. But we're gonna scrub off a lot of velocity ahead of time. Something like, I don't know, we'll try this. We gotta leave enough Delta V to survive. I have not tried a, a spicy re-entry at all with this vehicle, so. Okay, let's try that. those decouplers, isn't it? Jeez, it is it gets so spicy so fast. The tanks will blows up? That just seems weird to me. Okay, we're gonna give it another go here, and then I'm I'm gonna get out of here pretty soon. <laughs> Dang it. 
If private corporations manage to get to the moon or Mars first, do you fear Coca-Cola or other brand ruining the legacy of it all? Um, I don't think you change the legacy. Like, it just ushers in a new era. Like, if Coca-Cola went to the moon tomorrow, I don't think they'd be like, no, oh, the Apollo missions meant nothing. Like, it doesn't change anything, in my in my opinion. Um, it We have to have, you know, some kind of protective things in place about, like, I don't want them carving out Coca-Cola sign on the moon, like, and making the whole moon a giant Coca-Cola symbol. That's something that I don't want. But at the same time, like... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I, that's, I don't think it changes the legacy, in my opinion. You know what we're going to do? We're barely going to, we're going to raise our orbit quite a bit. Too much. Wait, what am I doing? Okay, 60, we're going to get a little closer, and then we're going to do another burn. I think that's survivable. <laughs> Why don't I quick save it here so I don't have to like do the same adjustment every time? Man, that's fast. Still trying to figure out why that tank is the thing that blows up first. I, we at least need an arrow capture, otherwise we're screwed. Um. So uh, Oxymoron says, you are, you are absolutely entitled to protect yourself from the, the torrent that animini animinity can bring that's toxic and you don't deserve that stress. Nobody does. Well, thank you. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer to any of that stuff, obviously. But it is something that I think we need to be considering as a, as a species and in society because it is definitely we're, – we're in, we're in some new territory now. Like we're treading new territory and it's weird, you know. Um, Okay, we're going to have to take some dire action here. I don't think we're going to make it. Because we're going to run out of Delta V. We won't have enough Delta V to land. It doesn't take a ton, but that's definitely not enough. There we go. We got an arrow capture. Ish. Oh, wait. No, we didn't. <laughs> God, really? There we go. All we have is 350 meters per second <laughs> to come in. Oh, God. Um, yeah, it's only green pepper, pepper spicy. Uh, Dave, do you think that SpaceX, if they go to Mars, um, we will we'll take the same precautions NASA does to prevent carrying bacteria, at least before people get there? I would. I think there's a, some really strict planetary protections that are just kind of universally accepted, and I don't think they'd get even like licenses to launch and stuff. Uh, it's taken very seriously by many people, including by SpaceX. Like they wouldn't want to, you know, accidentally um, do something, you know, that, that would endanger the planet either. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I think there'd be some serious protections in place even if SpaceX went privately. And even when SpaceX does go, it's not going to be like totally by themselves. Like they're going to definitely have uh, definitely have some help with NASA and all that stuff. So it's not going to be by themselves. That's just kind of the way it's going to go. Okay. Trying not to use up. Don't I have a reaction wheel? I'm trying to not use up a bunch of uh, RCS, but I'm going to. Okay. Come on, come on. Really? It's way more unbalanced again. That's weird. Well, it is working. Just very slowly. I'm nervous we're not going to make it in. Okay, okay. We survived that round of re-entry, so I really don't want to use up any more RCS. We might have to just turn on freaking infinite prop at the end here just to get this thing on the ground. Oh, you know what, guys? I have some ore, but that's going to be almost nothing. Dang it, that means we carried around all that for nothing. That's something. We're getting like one meter per second, two meters per second. <laughs> hey, we're getting some back. Okay, we got like 20 meters per second back from using ore. I am thinking about doing a tiny, tiny bit of... I want to get us a little lower in the atmosphere now. Um... Okay, lower in the atmosphere. I don't care. I gotta go, so we're just gonna we're just gonna nail this. Yeah, we're gonna try an arrow break as much as we can. That's spicy again. Boy oh boy is that spicy. Trying to find that balance, it's still trying to pitch away from that. There we go. There we go. Spreading those rear fins a little bit to try to stay balanced. It's not bad, actually. This thing's holding pretty good. This is without RCS. Uh oh. Oh. I don't know what that was. Hey, maybe that wasn't detrimental. Oh, just a solar ray. We're fine. We're fine. There we go. This is substantial. This is a, this is an arrow break here. There we go. This one's this one's good. This is some spicy stuff here. All right, how are we doing, guys? We're raising back up out of their stupid atmosphere again. I don't want to have to do another arrow break. I don't, like, have time for this. <laughs> well, let's speed it up. It's holding pretty good. Pretty stable. Pretty cool that we can make a stable flight configuration with those fins.
We slowed down. Uh, we don't have any more ore. We are out of ore. <laughs> What's... What spice level are we talking? We're, we're at like, I don't know. We're, uh, we're trying to go for like a million Scoville, but we're occasionally getting a little too far beyond that. Okay, once around again. Let's do this. Let's do this, Starship. Do your thing. Eight thirty, dang it. Now notice, you know, every time we do this, it is lowering our, our apoapsis. And that's good. We have to do this until basically this comes all the way down in. The problem is we're just really not bleeding off that much speed. Oh, we do get to extend these flaps a little bit though. Uh-oh. Not that much. Hmm. Yeah, I thought it was so stable. It's really not liking this. It's going to require some... Come on, man. Don't get way off angle like this. <laughs> this is a nightmare. There we go. Just rocking back and forth a lot. But we can get this. There we go. A little more stable here. And we're almost into a proper, like, we're almost suborbital. This is so stinking close. So close. It's going to be the next pass again, isn't it? Just barely. Look at how low our orbit is. Ah, oh, that's so frustrating. Okay, last one. Last orbit. Dang it. <laughs> that is definitely me. On fire. And you better believe it. Okay. Last one. This one will definitely, definitely get us on the ground. I guarantee it. If it doesn't, I'll be very shocked because that would be very surprising. All right, buddy. Here we go. Where are we going to land? It'd be nice if we landed on land, but I don't know if that's going to happen. We got a lot of water right here. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Pretty stable. Alright, 
need to do this. I'm watching my pitch gauge on the far left. So when it's stable, that pitch is dead middle. And then based on which which way it's like, if it's trying to go that, like pitching up, then I, I have to do one thing if it's, yeah. I'm trying to roll it. We do have a little bit of reaction wheel that can help us roll. <laughs> Mr. Steven will rescue me. I wish. We all need a Mr. Steven in our lives, don't we? Flamey end direction. Um, I think this is like officially just flamey end everywhere. That's all this is. Flamey end, yes. That's the question. Do I wear a pointy end up, flamey end down shirt at the Starship presentation on Saturday, or do I wear the full flow stage combustion, combustion cycle shirt? I think that might be what I have to do. Oh, geez. Not this again. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. Careful, Starship. We don't got time for this. Losing Delta V with every little poof. It's pretty amazing, actually, that it can get back on track like that. Now, we're, we're coming up on, like, once you get below 2,000 meters per second in the lower atmosphere, it, a lot of stuff changes, and it, it can flip really quickly, and that's kind of scary. But it is holding. Oh, we're going to land on land. Wow. Okay. It's actually really, really stable. Look at our pitch and our yaw. Uh, right when I say that, of course, it starts to change. Still pretty stable, though. Man, come on. Get on the ground. Well, not yet. Bleed off your speed. Then get on the ground. We're going to have to do this flip as late as we can because we have no Delta V. No, this is fine. We're not too spicy. We're fine. There we go, we survived that weird regime. It might get a little weird around here again too though. Okay. We're still falling. And we're wasting fuel with RCS right now. <laughs> But it's still slowing us down quite a bit. Look at how much... I'm going to quick save right here. Because we actually have a chance to maybe land this thing. Which is nuts. I honestly didn't think this is going to be even close. Look at how slow we're going. I mean, this, this is amazing. We're free falling, but we're slowing down because we're getting into the thicker and thicker atmosphere. And I'm going to wait to that last second to do that flip. If I do it right... We could survive. I'll just have very, very little room for error. Okay. God, I think I kind of have to do it already. No, I don't. No, I don't. Let's ride this out. Let's ride this thing out. Oh, no. I didn't like that. Not like that at all. Okay. Shouldn't have messed with it. We gotta go tail down. We gotta go tail down. Come on. We're eating up way too much Delta V. Oh, shoot. There's no way. No. No. <laughs> so close. 
We were like 100 meters per second off. Oh, and yeah, our Kerbal died. We gotta see it. We gotta see it happen, right? We made it this far. We gotta see it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna add fuel. We're gonna land this thing. We, we'd have to, right? We just have to see this thing land. And then I gotta get out of here. This is way later. This is way longer than I wanted to stream. Dang it. Taking forever. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Any updates here from, from Mr. Elon about the cool stuff? No. Uh, by the way, I saw a notification. I think we, we have limited edition. Like these are not, there are not a lot of these utility pouches. And I think we've almost run out. Um, yeah, so pay attention to that, guys, because those are still, still in stock for now, but I think we only have like 25 of those total, and I think we're already sold like 10 tonight or something, or 10 since they came back in stock. Okay. Infinite prop. Okay, we're going to try and do this flip as late as we can. Okay, it, it needs us to do something here. So, totally cheating. We had to turn on infinite prop. But, hey. We did our best. Still cool to see. I mean, this is actually a pretty decent representation. Hopefully, they just do better than I do. <laughs> I mean, these raptors are just, or whatever they are, not raptors, but like the RS25 copies are way too gimbly sometimes. Oh, landing on a tree. <laughs> Good thing there's not a, <laughs> what's it called? <laughs> Get out of that tree, thomp art. What a way to land. What a way to land. There you go. Yep, just avoid that tree that's literally bigger than a skyscraper. Not a big deal. Nope, nope, nope. Sorry, just trying to bleed off some of that horizontal velocity. There we are. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Let's get to daylight so we can see this baby hanging out with the trees. There we go. Welcome home, Thompart. It just took a little little cheating of the fuel. Oh man. There we go, guys. We did it. At least we, we kind of did it. We could do a lot of refining, a lot of tweaking to make this a much better system. Maybe that's something I'd do in the future, but for now, we did good enough. That's good enough for now. Definitely having vac vacuum optimized engines would have made a huge, huge difference for this mission. Like a massive, massive difference. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. All right, guys. I uh, again, thank you to all the new members, and we had new members, we have new patrons, you guys are awesome, thank you, it's going to help a lot when I'm, I have to, you know, fly me and a camera guy down to the presentation this weekend, um, I'm working on a new office space with a new studio space, I'm working on a new computer space, I'm, I'm hiring an editor more, I'm trying to crank out more content, and that is, of course, thank you to my Patreon supporters and the people that shop on everydayastronaut.com, if you guys want to help support, do what I do, and get some cool stuff like Norminal Hats. Um, Apollo hatch t-shirts. I think these are almost sold out. Some of these are already sold out. Yeah. Um, sorry, but 
there's still a few. So if you're small, if you're extra large, uh, 2XL, 3XL, oh, just 2XL? Yeah, just XL and 2XL, or extra small and XL or whatever, 2XL. Um, so make sure if there's something you see in the web store, get it while you can because most of the stuff like this is limited edition. This will try to keep in stock, but the we're currently on like round three of full flow shirts and they run out of stock and then we do another run. Um, this is definitely limited edition. Uh, the Starman hoodies are totally sold out again before they even went public. Uh, tomorrow I will have posted um, limited edition signed prints. So um, launch prints, I'll actually have the ones of uh, the signed version of the Starhopper prints. So if you want a signed version of these, uh, hand signed, of course, I don't like stamp or anything. I actually signed um, a limited number of, of prints. So those will be in the store tomorrow for you guys. And yeah, and then don't forget, there is the new rapid unscheduled discount section. So these are, this is inventory because again, we do runs of shirts. So we actually have inventory, which means the quality can go way up. We have cooler sew on patches and a lot of cool things like that. Um, they were totally customized, custom packaging, like everything. So if you uh, see something in here, these are definitely like not, not going to be in here long because we're just clearing up inventory. So um, get stuff in there while you can. Uh, everydayastronaut.com slash shop. That helps so much. That definitely helps me get to um, a place where I can just continue to improve the product and continue to be more places at once physically. <laughs> like that's kind of just how it works and hopefully provide you guys the best coverage and the best everything I can give you guys. So yeah, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Uh, you guys were awesome. It was, it was a good spend on my Thursday night, except for that whole part where the internet totally pooped on the bed or OBS it or whatever. Um, other than that, thanks for hanging out guys. That's going to do it for me. I'm Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut bringing space down to earth for everyday people. Bye everybody.